once we build something, let's say it's a billion dollar operation, we have transparency, we have checks and balances on what we build, it's going to be much easier now to identify a threat and a target against what we build. Mm. And let's say it falls down, so what? What do we do next? And what do we have to do with the rest of our lives? Yeah. Keep rebuilding until it's built. Yeah. I'm 19 Keys and this is High Level Conversation. Tap in with the guys. How can we as a community harness what you've learned about control and confidence and give it to the entire community? I know it's a loaded question. <laughs> now, you know, what I've learned through an accumulation of different experiences, trainings from Oakland to St. Louis, uh, you know, like, like I have to give, you know, all praise due to Allah and all credit to you know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, particularly the Fruit of Islam training, you understand me? And that training is the training of the military side and the Nation of Islam, rearing young black men, teaching them how to be men, how to move with discipline, order, mm -hmm. right? And I think that the fear and the propaganda that has been spread against the Nation of Islam that makes black men and women not tap into them brothers who are literally over there training you, yeah. you understand me? where a brother come in there dusty and they leave out shiny and give you that vibration. Like we have to first eliminate the fear to go and, and accept our own and be yeah. ourselves. Like there's no yeah. easy way around the yeah. fact that you have people that come in your community. They've been giving you media for the last 60 plus years. You understand? 90 years. Yeah. Um, they've been giving you knowledge. They've been giving you example. They, they're raising families right there in those environments and you're afraid to tap in with them. Mm -hmm. Like if you can go to different parts of LA, New York, Chicago, ask the gang members around there, you understand me, who to help them settle differences and conflicts. Who the brothers that come in there that's not afraid yeah. of those environments, yeah. right? That's on the back end, that's not doing it for press, not doing it for media, right? Where, where those environments that have been consistent to where you can go in any Sunday, you understand me, and you can go hear a word and the brothers will help you out in the spirit yeah. of brotherhood. The yeah. sisters will help you out in the spirit of sisterhood. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know a better place. So first I will say, you have to go to NY.org, go to the Nation of Islam. Brothers and sisters have been doing this so long that they are experts in the resurrection of our people, okay. right? Like once you get that knowledge, that changes who you are because now you know who you are. And then beyond that though, you're talking about, you know, having, and so this is where I feel like when we talk about billionaires, right? Yeah. Because if we really look at the communities, like, how, like, why don't we see what Marcus Garvey did with his chapters? Mm -hmm. Why don't we see what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad did with his mosque and temples, right? Because if you want to start something, just start it. If you yeah. have billions of dollars, then that means that you can start buying up real estate right now and create those training crowns by literally going inside the communities like my brother New Era Detroit. New Era have chapters around um, America mm -hmm. in like the worst parts of the hood where they do training, particularly like this, financial yeah. training, um, protective training in the environments and things of that nature. So like if I got that billion, I'm gonna go to the environment where people are already doing it, mm -hmm. give them that funding so that they can maximize on what they've already been doing. Because you got to go to people who already got the spirit first. Yeah. You understand me? Like empowering nonprofit organizations that are taking a, a, a 10 cent from every dollar that they're getting, you understand me? And putting it towards the cause don't move the needle. If, what about the one person on YouTube who's like, you want Kanye to team up with the nation to help black people when he can then lose everything? To that, you say what? Because you know they're going to say it. What's the point of having everything if you do nothing? Yeah. What's, and, and I don't want Kanye to do anything. Mm -hmm. You understand me? I think that it's never on one man, ever. I think the most dangerous thing is that when you point to one man to be like, it's your problem. Yeah. You understand me? Solve this. Yeah. Hell no. I think that, you know, Kanye West has done a lot of good for Absolutely. black people. Absolutely. And doesn't get enough credit for it. A lot. Yeah. In his music and his representation and his influence. You understand me? Like, I appreciate Kanye West and his platform mm -hmm. as a black man. I was always taught do not criticize black. Mm -hmm. So I'm not here to criticize Kanye. I'm not here to criticize none of that because we have enough of that in the media as Absolutely. it exists. Kanye yeah. West, I appreciate you and your platform. Absolutely. Story over. When we talk about possibility of what already exists based on the resources, mm -hmm. 
based on the institutions that are forming yeah. and what they need is just resources. Yeah. So having a list of what needs to be resourced, what needs to be funded and collective, because collectively we have way more money than Kanye West, yeah. right? Collectively we have more yeah. money than Jay-Z. Collectively yeah. we have more money than Robert Smith. Yeah. So collectively there's nothing stopping us from having a DAO to where we're pouring billions of dollars in and then voting on what we want to do with that money. Mm -hmm. And to me, the collective operation means that we have to now put responsibility on everyone, yeah. not Kanye West. Not just one person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what a person wants to do with the money that they've accumulated over time, I actually have no say-so on that whatsoever. Yeah. And I've never become a person that pocket watches. Yeah. You understand me? That sucker. So at the end of the day, do what you want to do, yeah. but when it comes to the collective, yeah. what are we going to do? Yeah. And there's technology that says that, like the Unobliged Muhammad is the one who had the, the economic blueprint and gave a breakdown of a person, everybody putting in 10 cents a week, you understand me, and how much that generates over time and how much we can solve all yeah. our collective problems. Why do you think someone hasn't put that in place? Um, it's, it's been blocked a few times, you understand me? Yeah. Um, and I think that we like talking about change than we actually like changing. So I think that now we in a position where we understand branding, marketing, psychology, mm -hmm. you understand me, society, technology, and we have more people with more platforms and more media and more operations yeah. to where it's much more possible now. Yeah. Because I think that even if somebody wants to shut it down, we can bring in the brilliance, the most brilliant minds that work for us against whoever that doesn't work for us. Yeah. Right? Like, we see it happen in real time right now. Look, it, it, like, okay, maybe the board ape doesn't have a social impact cause connected to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But if somebody wants to stop them, it'll be blatant that somebody wants to stop Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Right? Because it's transparent. So yeah. somebody literally has to go in and find a way to corrupt the system that they've built. Mm -hmm. So once we build something, let's say it's a billion dollar operation, we have transparency, we have checks and balances on what we build it's going to be much easier now to identify a threat and a target against what we build. Mm. And let's say it falls down. So what, what do we do next? And what do we have to do with the rest of our lives? Yeah. Keep rebuilding until it's built, yeah. until it's sustained and protected. So do you think Dow, crypto and Web3 is like the great economic liberation tools of the next 50 years for us? Yeah, and, and that's a part of it because you know I think that if you had asked me that 50 years ago, I don't know what the hell you said, yeah. right? And if you ask me 50 years later, that's probably gonna be even greater tools that we can use. Yeah. The idea of it more so is that technology, right, allows us to have much better economic liberation tools than we've ever had, and we're not appreciating or using or what's use available them. to us. Yeah. You understand How do we me? get people to use them though? Because people will say it's too complicated. Like for me with stocks, I don't know. And I'm like, you guys have figured out how to sell drugs on the internet and not get caught. Yeah. But buying shares on Robinhood is too tough. Yeah. So how do we cut the excuses down and get to the implementation a lot faster so we can get to the outcome that we want? Well, when you look at the current statistics on it, right, they say it's 4% adoption around the planet, you mm -hmm. understand me, when it comes to crypto. Um, right now, the numbers have increased with the amount of women that have gotten crypto, mm -hmm. not just in the U.S., but also worldwide. And in some places, there are more women than there are men. One in seven wallets are owned by women. It's not enough women in cryptocurrency. A lot of women talk about being independent and not depending on a man or finding themselves in situations to where they are financially oppressed. But cryptocurrency allows women to be able to take the power in their own hands to be able to utilize a simple skill set and start making money on a daily basis. You can be a mother, you can be a part-time uh, employee, and you can still trade cryptocurrency by following the market and being part of a growing community. I don't want to see the next generation of women left behind because they didn't tap in and interact with this opportunity. That's why I created Infinite Wealth Strategies. It's infinite wealth, but you need a strategy in order to get you some. Make sure you tap in today, use promo code WOMAN, and take control of your future. It's waiting for you. It, it, you got tech curiosity, crypto curiosity, NFT curiosity, mm -hmm. and you start to see those numbers increase. What is transitioning people over from being curious to actually being adopters, at first it was my friend got me on, yeah. right? Your friend gets you on because, hey, this coin balloon, this stock went up, I'm in this. Now it's education putting people on that's allowing them to transition and be in it longer, mm -hmm. right? 
So as much as, you know, uh, people don't think of education as sexy, but yeah. education is the pathway, right? Like what we're doing literally is onboarding people yeah. to new tools of wealth that they yeah. can now go about start using. And especially if women make it a requirement that you have to have crypto on stocks yeah. before you can even get to the date. Yeah, like two hundred dollar day, show that wallet. Yeah, King. he ain't got no crypto in his wallet. Like at least one of the wallets. He yeah. got, you ain't got to see all the wallets. You yeah. feel me? But you can have a little trust wallet set up. Yeah, a little because, legend. Because women dictate everything in our culture. Yeah, everything is hot. Like, so if we can harness, and I've always said women are better investors, better catalysts for change. Mm -hmm. But yeah, how can we empower them more to get to the end goal? Um, I think it's empowering the women who empower us other women, mm. right? Um, there are some sisters who reached out to me recently um, and they were showing me that, you know, they have large circles of women that they're teaching about stocks and crypto and things of that nature. Now I have to sit down with them. Once yeah. they come to my view and I see what they got going on, it's my job to say, well, I have a larger platform. Yeah. Let me have a conversation with you to see how we can put on more women. Yeah. And I think that as long as we don't leave women isolated to do their own thing, you understand me? And they feel that connection between us. Because yeah. the worst thing that we can do is have a women's movement where it's just women. You understand I me? I agree. That, that's the worst for us. But, but tell them why. Well, specifically for black culture. Because Absolutely. Black, listen, anything of greatness that we're going to build out in the future is going to be done with black men and women working side by side. Side by side, yeah. We have to have a brother, sister, uh, uh, um, a husband, wife. You understand me? Um, a partner, partner. Um, type of agreement and yeah. setup in our community yeah. because the first thing they destroyed was our connection and relationship Absolutely. with our women. So when they do it on their own, they feel like nobody helped them, mm -hmm. right? So now they look at you like, well, we was doing this, y'all weren't helping us, this, that, and the third. By the time we meet up, we have completely different mindsets and agendas. Yeah. So now we can't even get in a relationship with each other. Yeah. This woman has empowered herself, now she's independent. You understand me? There's no interdependency at all in connection. The independent black woman and the dependent black man both go in opposite directions. Yeah. Because she's independent, so she can't depend on nobody. Yeah. You understand me? Or she won't depend on nobody, right? He is uh, um, not independent. You know, he can't be depended on. Yeah. So she can't go to him. He can't go Which to her. Which is created by design. Created by design. Yeah. But if they're building and we help them build, we can say, look what we built together. Yeah. Right. Then both our ideas are intertwined and what's being built out. So there's no conflict of interest there, yeah. right? There's no, well, that was a woman's movement and y'all did the man's thing over here because we yeah. don't have a man's movement, right? True. We don't have that. Where yeah. black men, white men, Asian men, brown yeah. men come together and be like, yo, what's going on with us men? At least I don't want to be a part of that if there's yeah. something going on, that's some weirdo stuff, yeah. right? But that don't exist. But women have a movement outside of their color, mm -hmm. right? So a black woman will be connected to women specifically just because they're women, yeah. right? I don't have connection with other men because they're men, mm, okay. right? Yeah. That's the difference. So yeah. I'm not going to be celebrated for being a man just because yeah. I'm a man. Well, women will be like, listen, we will help you get funding. We love the fact that this is a women's business. You're teaching women, things of that nature, yeah. right? So the ones that I respect the most is like, like Queen of Four said, that it's not enough for a woman to be in power because she's a woman. She has to first know that she's a black woman. Mm. She has to be connected to her people, right? And that's why when we draw back from the subject that Revolt wanted me to talk about, black women being empowered to date outside their races, you are not empowered when you date outside your race. Why would somebody pour that into your head that you have this beautiful black man and woman that can work together and build something, mm -hmm. but it's more empowered to go outside of that? Yeah. That's literally somebody, literally, with an agenda to get you to hate your own self and kind. Yeah. When you can look across, all across the planet Earth and see every single race of people who work together, create beautiful families. Yeah. You understand me? And they build And going empires. back to the family being a business. Yeah. That's the number one reason. So when they move the men out and women got preferential treatment in terms of housing and housing credit, it's a great business plan by design to be able to capitalize off of our dysfunction. When it comes to, why, why do you think the culture doesn't see the value that it should have right now, right? And let's say like there's a lot of culture vultures out there, mm -hmm. right? Ian Dunlap, based on what you put out, the value that you put out, yeah. right? The knowledge that you put out, the influence that you have, right? That's worth a billion dollars, 
right? Mm -hmm. I was talking to my bro, Kenan Beasley. We talk about evaluations. Evaluation is somebody that got a lot of money tell you yeah. what it's worth, right? But the reality of it, the intrinsic value of being able to move community and make that community money yeah. and have a presence, yeah. that's, that's a billion dollars. Nobody yeah. can tell me anything other than that. Yeah. Why don't you think either, do, or let me ask you, do you think that you are properly evaluated? No, or, or, or appreciate it. How do you evaluate yourself? If the or appreciate it, huh? No, because uh, if I was white, like I am what everyone thought Kathy was, was. Mm. So if you look at pure return, what I've called, I've been watching CNBC since 2004. I had like, I pray and I thank God. I'm like, I've never seen anybody be this accurate. Mm. Time after time, month after, like, and across futures market, crypto, Forex, stocks, political change. Like yesterday it popped up Truth Social was the number one trending app I said on Market Mondays. I've like, seen that. I watched your episode. Yeah, Sorry. I was like, listen, Elon probably is going to acquire, because they're friends, is probably going to acquire truth. Now all of a sudden everyone's reporting. But, you know, I mean, it's worth trillions. If, if the United States of America cares about capital more than anything, and I've mastered the market like no other, then am I not the most valuable in terms of the capital market? How Especially do you, giving it out away for free. So... That's very interesting, right? Because, you know, I've always said that black influencers, thought leaders, educators are the most undervalued, yeah, right? Absolutely. Completely. There, there's not even a system to give you proper evaluation, yeah. right? Like the amount of funding that goes towards black creators is, is terrible. Yeah. You understand me? But specifically, like, let's say somebody wants to hire you for a job. Mm -hmm. They're going to think about things in a bubble because they don't really understand the true value of how things are connected now. Yeah. That if I'm going to hire Ian Dunlap, I have to think about a certain budget. But you want to think about it in connection to a rapper first. That I'm going to pay this rapper a certain amount and there's yeah. already a certain budget in your head associated with entertainment. Mm -hmm. Right? Educational budgets people don't understand yet because they are not looking at it as all media. Yeah. What the rapper do is they bring people and they capture attention. Yeah. Right. The difference is they don't leave to give them value. Or, right? or empower them later. Yeah. Right. The, yeah. the empowerment of and not value because there's value in what an entertainer does, but yeah. value in the sense that they're going to have that knowledge and information and they can utilize yeah. that applicably in, for the rest of their life. Yeah. That's different. Right. Yeah. So how do you value that to where this person is condensing the last 10, 20 years of knowledge that they have? Not only that, they're going to sell tickets. Yeah. They're going to bring influence, media. I have that brand connected to my and brand trust. forever. Value it trust. the same way they would JP Morgan or Goldman. But it's not done because of skin color. Like, that's why I say, and I say it to Chad, 85 <laughs> South, like I, Charlemagne. Most people don't appreciate or love being black enough to support black creations. If we did, we wouldn't operate the way that we do. Even in our culture, you know who would be the hottest interview for you? And I know you'll never do it, but a lot of people have four views. Takashi 69. Instant 1.5 million views, 3 million views. Yeah. But based on it, and the media part, media was created to help control people and sell products for companies. I think almost the way everybody doing media is wrong. Mm. Because like, how do you have media and no product attached to it when soap operas came from soap companies making content to then place their products in it or after it to sell product and commercials? Yeah. But they've trained us to be in front of camera, but not behind the scenes and really mm -hmm. do the deals. Like This episode is brought to you by Infinite Wealth Strategies. The media part don't matter. The entertainment part, you know, like I know, like most entertainers are broke. So why do we push to be that? I heard Chloe Bailey talking about the fact that, you know, they get robbed in the industry. Mm -hmm. They're only using the music as a commercial yeah. to sell product or, you know, to get certain looks on the back end. And again, why accept that? Because you want the truth? Always. Because they're horrible fucking business people. Mm. Most artists are terrible business people. You want to create, like most entertainers or artists can't even produce, mix and master. 
So you want to just come up with some lyric. May not have the brand or image together. You want them to promote, package, mix, master, have a relationship with Spotify. On the business end, if I have to do that, I should get the lion's share too. Are you getting robbed or are you not equipped with the information to help catapult your own brand? No other business on earth can do that. Right. No, I think they bring more to the table than they ever understand. Absolutely. You understand me? Because number one, like my brother Derek Grace always say, they need us, we don't need them. Mm -hmm. And if everybody makes that their moniker and they go by that when they walk into every single room, then they'll understand their true value. Yeah. That's just, that's just it. If my artists, please don't be mad, but focus on being a good business person first before you get to the music part. The music part matters the least. So you a rapper. Let's say you're a rapper, yeah. right? And you are starting day one and you want to go in there and you want to become big, mm -hmm. right? You want your music listened and heard everywhere, right? And you have an extreme valuable skill. Yeah. Do you go independent? Do you go shop a deal? What's your route? I'll do both. Okay. But the first thing is to build business first. It's always the foundation. What kind no of leverage. business? I mean, real estate, stock, education, tech, whatever you'll put your time into. Um, so every, you think an entertainer first should build a business before? If not, what leverage do you have? If a person comes in here and say, I want 1.5 million for three albums, it's projected to make $40 million. If I give you the 1.5, I should get 38.5 out of 40. But if you have your own funds coming through, when mm -hmm. you go in, you can right. say, hey, if we need 20 million to make 150, I'll put up 10.3, Mm. Your negotiation is dramatically different. Dramatically different. And that's why every time I have a meeting, uh, shout, out, shout out to good people at UTA, William Morris, they're like, we have to value you different because you're willing to put up your own capital. And you have relationships and you're a fund media and I came from advertising. So there's a few more things I bring to the table. Is I, I even hate when people say I'm talented. I'm like, no, I write checks. I'm an executive that's learned to be in front of mm -hmm. camera. But every rapper has to, and the ones we have, Jay-Z with Damon Biggs, Jeezy with BMF, Swisher House, rap a lot. The ones that were great business people before, they don't get jerked around like that. Mm -hmm. The ones that hope that, and it's not a label's response, a label is a hedge fund. I'm going to give you 5% or 10% of this capital, and I hope that I'll get 10x on it. If you don't, Great, so be it. Mm. Every company operates as a hedge fund. Mm -hmm. Who can I give capital to to make right. the most off and of? And they have to deploy capital. Have to. Mm -hmm. And if you are not hot anymore, I loved you for those four years you were hot, great. But if you don't need the financing or the loan from a label, you can write your own ticket. Mm. But if I make you hot and I build your brand and I get all your placements and I pick produ production, and I put you with a songwriter, I should get the lion's share. But it goes back to that work ethic. Most don't want to work on being great at something and then monetize so you can't get fucked. I agree. I agree. I think it's a harsh reality because, you know, I think a lot of artists only want to do one thing. I think a lot of mm -hmm. artists are lazy. Mm -hmm. They understand me instead of- They were conditioned to be that way though. Yeah. yeah. I think that the the the, Poor starving artist is yeah. a reality. It's almost like the uh, poor righteous teacher. Yeah. You understand me? That if you're going to help your people, educate your people, be a messiah, then you got to be poor at the same time. That's connected yeah. to the morality of it. And then yeah. the lifestyle of the artist, to be an authentic real artist is to not have money. Yeah. You understand me? But who came up with that? I don't Let even. Somebody that wanted people to be broke. <laughs> it's mind control. Wasn't a man that had money. Yeah. Because they, they won't tell you that if you go to... An accelerator that you should be a poor, righteous startup founder. Mm -hmm. The goal is to get money and then elevate or sell it and then you can live your life. Well, well the, the money, so talking about money, I think is probably one of the bigger issues that we have than anything. Oh, because yeah. when you talk about negotiating around money, leverage and things of that nature, like you can go in there understanding your value in a way mm -hmm. to where if you have a, such a solid plan, you can communicate what your business is going to be and yeah. what you believe is going to produce, project yeah. it, right? Yeah. But talking about money is the last conversation people want to have. And it should be one of the first. Why are we so afraid of numbers? We were trained not to talk about it because we didn't have a lot of it. Anything that a guy does not have, 
They don't want to speak about it a lot. Mm. So we have to break that norm. Mm. Um, even in the job market now, we're in another recession right now. The job we're in a recession right now. We just haven't said it yet. We, we'll talk about that. Yeah, a bit. We'll talk about we that. haven't recovered the jobs from 07, 08. Mm. Now we're entering another one. If you don't put the ability to make money on demand at the top of your list, you are prey for someone else. Mm. Between inflation, like India, inflation. I gotta put my old gloves back on. I'm just saying, like, it was already at 14%. Brazil, inflation is real high. In America, we said it would never get that high, and then inflation took off. That's the number one reason you have to invest and build a business because things are always gonna cost more. Mm. And if you hope, the only person hope ever worked for was Obama. That's, that's, not, that's not a viable strategy. Like, I hate, and I know in the comments, I'm like, yo, he's angry. And no, like, no, I'm, I'm just here, telling you. Put the energy up. The absolute fucking truth. If you don't invest, someone is going to have control over you. And as talented as we are, I think it's crazy for an artist to put 100000 behind a song. But, and then the music industry lets a tech company say, hey, and I love Steve Jobs. They hated Sean Parker, but accepted the same plan from Steve Jobs, and now you can sell a single for 99 cents. Now a stream is worth one-ninth of a penny. They won't even tell you the real number. Mm. But if we team together and build, like, why hasn't... But how much is that stream really worth the reality of it? Because stream is attention, right? When somebody, they loop in that song. But they find a way to devalue our art and make everyone else's more valuable. Right. So if we go to Board 8, no slight to them. But how is their art worth one million times more than anything Ross, Jeezy, T.I., Lil Baby has ever made? It's because impossible. all of those rappers gave it. So Sign the greatest right rappers, away. soccer players, football players, artists, entertainers, politicians, yep. CEOs, black collectively for free gave them the biggest endorsement and investment Absolutely. that they've ever gave anybody else for free. Absolutely. They've never, that has never been done. And I'm be real, had I history. came out with one of those paintings and sold that shit for 500,000, y'all be like, man, he full of shit, he a scam artist. That is, listen, so, you know, like a lot of people come to me on the back end, right? Yeah. Consultations, yeah. you know what I mean? Want to pay me 50, $100,000, teach them this game. Yeah. When I look at their wallet and what they own, it's an ape, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's, Almost 100% of the time, it's never a project I'm not mad that's owned that by they black carved person. out a, a niche. No, they killing the game. Absolutely. But I want us to see ourselves for a second, though. Yeah. I want you to see yourself in the fact that every single rapper will completely and freely, you understand me, like Gunna endorse. got a tattooed on him, will completely and freely endorse and give money and invest in it freely. This is how they got there. Twitter, how I got hot, black people. Yeah. Facebook, how I got hot, black Instagram. people. Instagram. Once we get into anything yeah. and we collectively give you an endorsement, yeah. go look at Gary Vee, how you get hot, black people. You understand me? Go look at Grant Cardone, how you get hot, black people. Yeah. When, and, and, and it's not to say they ain't have money and whatever they have, but once yeah. you get an invitation into the courtship, yeah. and we give you that endorsement and we will proudly portray you and put you on our platform mm -hmm. and our music or whatever, you are now rotating in the minds of all black people across the planet Earth. But if we don't charge for that or don't have equity in that, and people get mad, I'm like, I want you to endorse this. I'm like, if I don't own it, I'm not gonna push it. Yeah, 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 I'm cool with like, that. Like, for what? Yeah. I don't need another look. I don't need more work. Yeah. I want more time with my kid. I'm good. Like, every person should think like this too. If I'm not getting a royalty in perpetuity or equity, why would I push it? That's prostitution. That don't make sense. It don't make no sense. It's prostitution, but, but only they allow our culture to do that. But that's what happens. And, and now the, so like, I think that Board was like a, a, a great case study and it's a, an evolving case study in reality. And, and don't get me wrong, I make money off that. I'm, I make some money off the eight coin a day. Mm -hmm. You understand me by the time, I don't know what it's gonna be at by the time they see this, but yeah. today I made some money, that's for yeah. sure. You understand me? And I'm gonna sell it all, over the top. The truth is our culture don't like any assets that is not predominantly owned by white people because it has considerably more value than mm. if somebody black owned it. Let's keep it real. That's a fact. Even, even projects out there, there's NFT projects that are successful. There's a black face, but in the back end, yeah. it's all white team. Yeah. It's a whole white team. That's what it needed. Right? It is what it is. Because the trust is higher there than it is with us. That's a fact. But you see what I put out, you know what I mean? I, I had to intentionally talk to us. Yeah. Because let's, let's talk about us for a second. I want to get into the recession and tech and everything, but let's talk about us as a culture and our peers. 
in the way we move. We don't have enough appreciation for each other to work together. Mm -hmm. We think we do, we might say it, we might get some flowers, we might do this, that, yeah. and the third, but if we truly appreciate it, and we know how much it takes to yeah. be in the position that we at. Yes. We know how much it takes to intellectually yeah. be at the position that we at. Yeah. But the appreciation is still not there. You understand me? Like, yeah. it's like, if I'm going to, let's, let, let's say if I'm announcing um, Jay-Z, well, no, Jay-Z is a bad example, because you go announce Jay-Z, how Jay-Z supposed to be announced, right? Mm -hmm. But let's just say I'm announcing a, a, a rapper or somebody, right, mm -hmm. at my event. Yeah. I'm pulling out the grandest stops, fireworks, the whole night. Yeah. You understand me? Because I want people to understand how important it is mm -hmm. that this guest is here at this yeah. time and the value of their immense present is. Yeah. Then I get to my bro Ian. Mm -hmm. Man, that's what's up, my bro. He done lap here. You know what I'm saying? Just got the mic. I introduce you. Nothing over the top, nothing crazy. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. What does it say to the audience that just watched that? This person has considerably way more value than this person. Yeah. But why? So there's no way possible. I don't, there's, there's not a single rapper that's gonna get on that stage, entertainer, mm -hmm. I don't wanna just point out rappers because yeah. I love rap. Yeah, I love y'all. Sure. Um, you know, there's not a single entertainer mm -hmm. that's going to get out on that stage and going to proceed to give more value than I will impactfully once yeah. those people leave. Yeah. You understand me? So. Once you start to get people to properly evaluate mm -hmm. true value, yeah. the scales change. Because you stop even wanting entertainers to show up as the yeah. true value. Instead, the brother just gave you the game on the future of money yeah. and technology and stocks and wealth generation. We need our own media. That's to the do most that. valuable. One of the most important pillars that we need is media. We don't have enough media without competition to help uplift, uplift each other. But it. that competition part be, is, is strange because we not eat, like people talk about market share. Mm -hmm. I can't take no market share from you because yeah. at the end of the day, it's seven billion people on you the planet. You can only multiply it by yeah. working together. Why yeah. are we going after the same people? Yeah. Like, if you want to think of yourself as like, for me, Ain't nobody can compete with me. I'm 19 yeah. Keys. I'm yeah. a, I'm a, I'm a state that and I'm, I am me because yeah. the lane that I carry, you understand nobody me? Nobody can occupy. It, it yeah. is what it is. But when we start thinking about it in the financial education space, mm -hmm. then people start thinking these things overlap. But there's a million Asians and Indians and Mexicans and white boys and white women and yeah. things of that nature teaching and we never look at them as competition. That's true. Never. Not one yeah. time we go blink over in their direction and be like, hmm. I need to take your customers. And they got more than you do. Yeah. These people yeah, got, true. they got a, a operation with 100,000 people and you trying to compete with a bro who got 4,000. Yeah. Like, that's why you lose. That's an inferiority complex because all of us that are great want to work together. Absolutely. They even, like, even with educate, people like you're educated, I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm the best at investing. Yeah. Like, I'm not here to, people may not even like how I teach, but I'm like, put yes in chat if I made you money. Yeah. Even with that, that being my calling card, I don't know anybody that every time they say it, they're like, yeah, he's made me money. It's rare, excluding, like, Kramer was on fire in 07. But he, that's why I tell you media is not the most important thing. He went from having two segments and a show on CNBC in 07, 08, to now being on 14 segments a day and having a show. What time can he get to research? So if you don't own media, if you're not the executive, and your talent, they can work you so much that your talent is no longer good enough. That's a fact. That's a fact. And let's not, let's be real. Most people who watch CNBC prior to 2013 or 2015 associated him with the platform. I now love everybody there. And it was when I talked to Josh, Bono, and who are great there now, they limit the number of segments that they do because you still have to do the work, but they're not valuing each other properly. I think that just comes from miseducation. And to be honest, it's the first time at scale that you've seen black men have impact over the market. It's new. Yeah. It's but new. we got to be able to control the missile and the laser of our impact. Mm -hmm. Because we can, let's be honest, from the standpoint of the impact we have, we're still impacting everybody else's family more than we impact on our own. Absolutely. Like, once, once you, like, even... 
if I don't have an NFT platform, mm -hmm. if I don't have my own crypto marketplace, I'm sending hundreds of thousands of people to go in and pour their money onto someone else's platform. Yeah. So to Coinbase, to Robinhood, to yeah. Trust Executive, all of these different, yeah. I'm making them millions, millions of, of dollars. dollars. Yeah. I'm literally yeah. an affiliate marketer for them and not getting yeah. paid a cent. Yep. You understand me? So that's why when I do interviews, I never mention a name. I did Breakfast Club. I ain't mentioned nobody's name. Which you, why you would I? Right, they, yeah, not one you? of them told me before you go up there, I'm gonna give you a million dollars if mm -hmm. you just mention the name. Yeah. Why would I do that then? Yeah. I know the value that I have. Mm -hmm. And that's and, and if I know the value, then I know the value you have. Yeah. So I can say, and I've done this, yeah, right, multiple times, where I bring black men together and be like, yo, you you doing this, how much? You doing that, how much? Well, you know if we put this together. Why hasn't that happened yet? Because you know I've been there. I'm like, yo, let's get that started ASAP. So, two parts. So I did it before. It failed because I was working with the wrong people, right? Mm -hmm. You work with the wrong people, even if it's the right idea, it will fail. Yeah. Now, I think all of us are a little more cautious. I think all of us have had business situations. We have up and downs. We've had turmoil. Yeah. So now you get the round table and you say, listen, I know where you at. Yeah. I, I can... I keep a, a, a mental foul on everybody mm -hmm. so that when I speak to them, I'm speaking to them with an updated mindset on who yeah. they are based yeah. on their current evaluation, yeah. not from what I thought they value was. Mm -hmm. But if you don't stay up to date on people, you can disrespect them by talking to them based on their old self. Yeah. Right. So it's like when I talk, like I, I, I have regular conversations with you, with Trav, with mm -hmm. Ian. I talk to him. I talk to whoever. Right. Yeah. Because in most time we we won't have no business together and it's just a conversation to speak and stay updated on each other yeah. and check on each other and things of that nature, which is solid. But then me, I'm always like, yo, this thing is coming. We can make a billion off this. Easily. And with that billion, we can be more impactful than we ever were. Yeah. Right? But when we get caught up in what we're already doing, mm -hmm. we still are not a people that are futurists, that are ahead of the curve, and that are early adopters and innovators of things in a matter to where we can get the most value out of it. Yeah. So it's like when we did the interview on Market Mondays about NFTs, during that time, I'm talking to people about, yo, like, we should do something together. Yeah. This shit can be big. Yeah. Right? So when I see the apes do it, I'm not mad at them because they execute it properly yeah. based on a new space and a new technology and the opportunity that existed. Yeah. Right? Cool. Now what we gonna do? Yeah. So, you know, I've talked to, I can say this on camera, because I've talked to EYL. Yeah. Ain't 100% in. Yeah. 100% in. Yeah. Right? Um, and I ain't gonna say everybody else's name just because we gotta, we you gotta know put I mean. things in. I, I've been ready. Ian is 100% in. Yeah. He ready to do that with the culture. Um, I talked to Trap. Trap said he in. Everything good, we yeah. in. Yeah. You understand me? Uh, I even talked to him in the circle of CEOs. They said they in. We got to just structure this thing. Yeah. And I sat down with one of my scientists yesterday. Uh -huh. we, we put some structure together. Man. Okay. You feel me? And I, and I think it makes the most sense because the people want it bad. Not only do the people want it, and I only try to do what the people want. Yeah. If I put it out there and the people are like, yo, unanimously, <laughs> we want this. Yeah. I don't see no negativity. Everybody's like, yo, let's get it. We can make it happen. Yeah. Right. And one idea was like, let's build this in front of the people. Mm -hmm. Let's get the votes from the people in what direction, how they want to, to go. go. So we build it in a manner that they want to see happen. Yeah. Because there's no other place on the planet Earth you go find the type of black men that are our peers and black women that are our peers that have the power, position, knowledge, and equity that we have that we can leverage yeah. to build something of uh, uh, that's dynamic with our communities. Yeah. Like, that's the, powerful. The, the people that done built these projects that we see billion dollar market caps, mm -hmm. some of them weren't even millionaires before they started. Yeah. Some of them had just quit their white collar job. Yeah. Some, some of them had no platform. Yeah. At all. Yeah. But that's the power of executing. The one thing, if you take away, are you doing enough every day to guarantee success? And people get mad. Like, I'm real big on punctuality, getting a certain amount of, like, if you're not getting at least, like, 50 things done per day, you have no shot. Because mm. look how quickly they built that brand. Even with, uh, when I was talking to Gary V and LA at Super Bowl, he was like, hey, they had Gunner first. Mm -hmm. 
and to see him make 95 million off V Friends, 30 day period, I'm like, it's powerful. But if we team together, could we do, you know? Yeah. I mean, I remember, I haven't told this story, but I remember when, you know, NFT was really popping off, just first started popping off. I was talking with Jay Electronica. Mm -hmm. And so I was supposed to do, or I was supposed to uh, assist to helping Jay and Jay, Jay Elec and Jay Z, because yeah. they was dropping their album at the time. Yeah. You understand me? Do a project. Because Jay Electronica, funny enough, the first person I see have a Discord. You understand really? me? Yes. He, wow, okay. he had a Discord for a long time. Wow, okay. Thousands of people. He'd be in there freestyling people in there the whole nine. But he does it because, you know, he has a very eclectic sense of, of character. He just yeah. likes to be connected to his yeah. people. Right? Which is a big lesson they need to take away. Yeah. Like, oh. Community is everything. Like, Jay Electronica was able to have a whole entire career off one song, essentially, mm -hmm. until this album came out. Yeah. And, of course, he had, you know, multiple songs that, you know, if you know, you know, you tapped yeah. in. But, um, so, you know, we had uh, some discussions um, that never ended up becoming fruitful, but it gave me an insight on the music business. You understand me? Because the way I was breaking down, because I want to see him get his just due based on his talent. Mm. Because it's not, there's only one J Electronica in the industry. Yeah. Right? And the industry can't change unless there's more or people like him get empowered. Yeah. Right? Because he's going to intentionally be shadow banned, if you will, because of, you know, his content mm -hmm. and what he speaks about. Because he's going to speak truth. Yeah. Right? And so uh, I remember one night, though, um, <laughs> I don't know if he was mad if I tell this story, though. Uh, he asked me to be his manager, right? Yeah. You understand me? Because, you know, I feel like Jay Electronica really has the ability to shift the entire culture of hip hop and music. Yeah. If the proper machine, and he allows the proper machine behind him, because I think yeah. a lot of things for Jay is Jay, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and I love a brother to death, but that's why I'm speaking on it publicly, because I want to see that rise happened, mm -hmm. right? And I think that Web3 would allow his type of talent mm -hmm. to rise. Does he want to see that rise happen, though? Because I feel like a lot of times we try and push people who don't want the greatness out of them that we see inside of them. Well, what happened when he dropped this, when he finally dropped the album, Yeah, it was the exact time the pandemic started. Mm. So, you know, timing just happened to be timing. Yeah. Right? When the, the moment you drop, I remember texting them like, you know, uh, it's, it's, I, I text quarantine team, because I'm like, yo, this is about to be a quarantine album. Like, yeah. literally, we about to go on quarantine. Yeah. Right? 40 days and 40 nights. But I'm like, no, that shit about to be, I seen this going to be a couple yeah. of years. But I'm like, damn, the moment that you drop the album, something else impactful happens in the world. Yeah. Right? Um, and the last time Jay-Z, you know, uh, it was 19 years from 9-11 when Jay-Z and Nas was having their feud. Mm. You understand me? And I'm like, yo, now this time when Jay-Z is dropping a collaborative album with somebody yeah. for the first time of his magnitude, you understand me? And instead of going at another black man, he's collaborating with a black man yeah. with a very positive spirit, energy, and message. Yeah. So I was just kind of observing that whole thing. But it's like, imagine if that album dropped and the world was open. It would add a different impact, yeah. different touring, different merch, different yeah. everything. Yeah. So I don't think it wasn't the fact that he wasn't ready. I think he was completely ready. I think out of all of the points in time in his career was the time that he was ready. Yeah. But we got hit with yeah. a once in a lifetime pandemic. Yeah, it's tough, man. I mean, even when new financial products come up, that's a signal for a recession too. Because Bitcoin was created in the last recession. So yeah. now seeing all of these products pop up really quick. They were telling you ahead of time that something was gonna come. But yeah, we gotta get that project in the way because we talked about it three or four times. I don't want it to be one of those things where it's like in three months, we should have done it. Even when you came on Market Mondays the first time and you was telling everyone about NFTs and crypto, shit took off and I'm like. We can't explain our impact because yeah. I can't tell you the amount of people that got into NFTs and crypto mm -hmm. directly because of me or that interview yeah. or something other, some yeah. other thing. Like just about everybody that's, not everybody, but a large Majority, percentage of I'll people for you. that's speaking on it now 
they got directly from that. Yeah. You understand me? Gave them the game. They don't always want to give it up 90% of the time. <laughs> 99% of the time. 99% of the time, yeah. they don't want to give it up at all. But, yeah. you know, the godfather of yeah. this. But that's that's always been my role, though, is to, you know, sound the trumpet. Do you feel underappreciated as well? Because um, you've helped influence, impact a lot of people, but I don't always see. I feel, that's why I always told you whenever we talked to them, like, you're the greatest out of all of us. Go cra- don't Because you were so used to holding back. I'm like, go crazy. And you have to hold back to make people comfortable, I'm like, man, let that fucking light beam tear everything down. Now, and I appreciate you for yeah. that, because most people, they're, they're afraid of that. Um, but you know, I appreciate myself so much that I don't feel unappreciated. That's I amazing. think that, like everybody that's human, you got moments where it's like, I know my value is more than this, that, and the third, but yeah. that only happens when you start comparing. You understand mm-hmm. me? Comparison depreciates you at that moment. You understand mm-hmm. me? Like. The moment I compare myself to anybody, they blessings, they looks, anything yeah. they have, I'm already depreciating myself. Yeah. Right? So, like, as you ask me that question in this moment, it's like, no, nah, I appreciate the hell out of myself. Yeah. So it's like, if, if the moment I seek that validation outside, I feel depreciated. Yeah. You understand me? But then once I start thinking about it, like, bro, I get so much love and energy everywhere yeah. I go across the planet Earth. Yeah. When I say across the planet Earth, yeah. like whether I'm in Egypt, whether I'm in yeah. Africa, whether I'm in Mexico, yeah. there's no place on the planet that yeah. I don't go and somebody give me a testimony on how to change their life. That's real. How could I not feel appreciated? Yeah. Do I feel valued at what my value is? Nah, that's well, different. Well, what's your value? Oh, oh man. Come on, the real number. Tell me, let's talk. Hey, man. Come hey, on now. Man. You know what I'm talking about? Talk to me then. Uh, so it depends on what the situation is, but. As a thought leader, you understand me? I have one of the most valuable minds in the world, yeah, right? Uh, perspective, futurism, innovation, creativity. Like, for my platform, like, I started off doing everything myself, yeah. right? Like, I design, whatever you see, I design, right? Yeah. Like, I produce, I create the business plan. I have multiple businesses, right? Yeah. On the back end, I just don't even always talk about talk it. Talk about it, yeah. Right? I do a lot of different things. Yeah. I design, I do art. Um, shit, spoken word, I freestyle, like, I'm going to design the, the captions, I'm going to design the, the style, the aesthetics, I'm going to put it all together. I'm going to have Listen a full vision Listen to everything that he talent. said he creates. You have to to be free. Then the research, yeah. the research, yeah. the investigation, everything that has to happen, navigating, going in certain rooms, having conversations, yeah. pulling out information, bringing it back to the culture, deciphering. It's a lot that goes into the encompassing of what you see as in, what yeah. you see as EYL, what you see as, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, I think it's just party and recording. Anybody. It's a lot of work. It's a lot that goes into yeah. it. So it's hard to say what that value is. You understand me? But I know it's a billion. Mm-hmm. You understand me? But it, it's, it's infinitely valuable. But it's like if somebody asked me to do a consultation with them, it's like, bro, like, unfortunately, when it comes to us, a lot of people that look like me can't afford me if I'm giving yeah. them my true value. Yeah. So it's like when it comes to working with our people, we always have to discount our value. And what that does is it creates a disconnect between what our true value is, yeah. right? And what our serving value is. Yeah. Because the value that we discount ourselves to serve is different than the actual value that we have. Yeah. So I know that f- completely. For, for so it's sure. like people reach out and I say no to a lot of stuff yeah, yeah. Majority. because it's like, I'm not going to just keep discounting my value. Yeah. Right. It's, and, 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 and so my negotiation has gotten different now where it's like, I would rather say completely no, yeah. or I'm a final way to leverage that to where I feel like I'm getting the value and you are too. Yeah. But I think that we are in a, in, in a very high inflationary period. So what do you do? You raise your prices, mm-hmm. right? Like it costs more now. Yeah. Otherwise I, came in this game saying that I would do it myself rather than allow somebody to depreciate me because I knew from the get-go they yeah. would not understand the value. Yeah. If I charged somebody, let's say a year ago, and somebody was, and I said, listen, I'm going to charge you $100,000 for an NFT consultation. Mm-hmm. Person looked at me crazy. Mm-hmm. You understand me? But it would have been worth it. Yeah. I would have gave you a whole blueprint, and if you would have implemented that into your business, Yeah. That could have been worth a hundred million. Could have yeah. been worth a million, could have been worth a billion. Who yeah. knows? So it's like, even today, if I'm talking to a celebrity, I'm talking to somebody on the back end, it's like, I don't want to have a conversation unless it's about the value first 
then we had a conversation second. Otherwise, I have to figure out a way to leverage you yeah. in a manner to where I can get this value out of this situation. Yeah. And if there's no leverage, then I'm just being nice. Yeah. And I'm not stupid to be nice. Yeah. You understand me? Unless I see something that you want to do for the community that's impactful, and then I'll give you the serving value to where I would do this for free. What, what do you say to the people that say you shouldn't charge people in the culture a lot? I would say... I'll give my take too. But. First of all, I don't know what the culture is means to them. Because a lot of people use the culture, you understand me, when they want to manipulate you. Absolutely. Like, culture is one of the most manipulating words to black people when you want to get them to discount their services. Yeah. Right? When you value something, you pay the price. Yep. You only have the discount when people don't understand the true value. Yeah. You understand me? If I go back to Infinite Wealth Strategies day one, I have a student, Jared Ross, came in there, $500. He now has a portfolio that's worth six figures, mm -hmm. right? He has his own course community and he's published a book by now, yeah. right? He fired his job and he dropped out of college. Yeah. And he is now has a completely new career path and life that he is living based on the Web3 opportunities, yeah. right? I have multiple students that same thing, like yep. duplicated over and over and over. I have people that they was in the BWO learning futures and stocks and crypto and yeah. setting up their trust and insurance and a multitude of other different yeah. things. I go back to New America, a uh, pandemic pack that I came out with where I was teaching people about the future mobilization, automation, digitization. Each, every time if somebody listened and they execute it. Yep. If they execute it. If they execute it yeah. is always the key. Yeah. That's a million dollars. Yeah. Like, when I say a million dollars, I'm not yeah. shying away from that. That's a million dollars worth yeah. the game, literally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and to the point where it's almost step by step. Yeah. Because when I used to do things, I just tell people, when it's something new, I tell them exactly what I'm about to do. Mm -hmm. And I do that so you can copy the exact blueprint. Of what I'm doing. Yeah. 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 Like, I'm not shying away from no knowledge. I'm saying, listen, I'm about to do this. This is what's happening in this space. Yeah. This is what you should do as well. Yeah. You understand? Why me? do you think people are afraid to execute or, or don't listen? But I want to answer your, your question directly first. I think that it's 100% okay to charge for your value in the culture. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of people in the culture that can't afford it. Yeah. And once you get a target of something that is out of your current budget, mm -hmm. you now have a target for what you should put your energy towards. Yeah. If, some, if I got $100 and something is 1000 what happens to a person is they go say, oh man, I can't afford that. Yeah. So they go take that $100 and spend it on some bullshit. Yeah. Instead of saying that, okay, I got this $100, how long will it take for me to get this $1,000? Yeah. The reason I wanted to buy that is because that's going to be an investment that's going to give me a return. So if I'm disciplined and I focus and I put my energy towards being able to afford that, yeah. when an opportunity comes, I will take it then I will not be shying away from opportunities that cost a thousand. Yeah. Right? Because now you're going to be able to afford higher level opportunities. Yeah. The mindset of wealth is to not shy away from things. Yeah. It's to find ways to uh, afford them. Yeah. But we, we, our sticker psychology and our number psychology is all messed up. Yeah. If I show you one zero zero, anybody see one zero zero, I don't care if you broke, poor, whatever, you have no reaction to the word 100, the numbers yeah. 100, 100. Yeah. If I put a dollar sign in front of that, and now you're going to look at it. If you broke, you're going to be repulsed by that, Yeah. right? If you got money, it has no feeling to you, whatever, yeah. right? You can do whatever you want to. But that dollar sign, that dollar sign psychology has a power over people, Yeah. right? that the moment that they see that they're either attracted to it or they're repulsed by it, it has mm -hmm. a magnetic energy. Yeah. And the power is to decrease the emotional power that money has over you and dollar signs have over you. Mm -hmm. To where it's like when you walk into a place or you look at something, you're not looking for those numbers to have an emotional reaction. You saying that this is my value, I'm a human being with a mind, I can afford anything, anything I want, want to. to. Yeah. It just depends on how bad I want to. Yeah. So a broke mind will find excuses. Yeah. Right? A wealthy mind finds a way. So That's a good point. I'm not worried about who has an issue with the price. That just means they have an issue with their abilities as a human being to afford the things that they actually want and see value in. Mm. You understand me? And there's some people that's happy with a certain standard of living. Absolutely. You can't force those people to level up. Yeah. So you have conversations. With, if this is all of the people over here that have no problem with the prices, 
why am I down here having problems with these people? Yeah. Why wouldn't I have conversations with them and then freely teach these people how they can afford what's up here? Yeah. And that's what I do. Yeah. There's so much free that if you don't get that, and I'm talking about millions of dollars of free information yeah. that's out there that I personally put out. Yeah. If you haven't with that, then I don't even want to have a conversation with you. With you, yeah. Like, yeah. why is you in my DMs trying to waste more of my time? Yeah, because you've given it to them for free. Yeah. Peace family, 19 Keys tapping in with you. Um, I want to tell you why you need to tap into the infinite wealth strategies. Number one, there's a lot of millionaires being brought every single day, right? The job market is devastated, you understand me? Um, you can go to college, but it's better to get you a skill. I've had several six-figure days in the market trading, right? Cryptocurrency. And at the time, I had little knowledge, right? I've sold an NFT, which was just a digital picture rendering for over $16,000. But why? Because I understood the market and I knew the value of it. I've sold thousands of books, you understand me, on my e-commerce platform, utilizing my strategies that I teach inside the Infinite Wealth Strategy. But I also have a beautiful community of people all around the world assisting, providing information, resources, and links. Because I know that it's harder to learn by yourself, but it's better to learn in a community sense. When you join Infinite Wealth Strategies, you too can become a part of a community of people learning together and earning together. Make sure you tap in because it's the education that you need in order to succeed and build wealth. Don't be on the outside. Tap in. Infinite Wealth Strategies. Well, why you think, because you be having issues with folks, man. Let's, let's talk about this. People got issues with Ian Dunlap, the master investor, man. They, should, they have issues with themselves. I'm saying because I know Ian Dunlap worth billions. You understand me? Like, you. An advisor you, just told me yesterday, like, if he did a stock club the way that I do it, it'd be two hundred and fifty thousand a year. Two hundred and fifty k a year, and it'd be worth it. Minimum. I know cats that charge twenty five thousand dollars a session. Yeah. You understand me? A session. Yeah. I'm talking about one day sessions, sometimes two day sessions. Like, that's ridiculous. So, all right, let's talk about you. Yeah. Right. Why you think people got issues with you and your prices, even though you bring value every single week and every single day? Because it's hard for most people to fathom that somebody black charges what I charge. Mm. If I was white, it wouldn't be an issue. If I was Asian or Jewish, it wouldn't be an issue. It's like, why does this guy, even when I first met Rashad and Troy, and uh, they was talking, looking at the price for the futures program, it was 25 grand for two years. You know, that's a steal. Mm -hmm. They're like, damn, it's a lot. I'm like, no, if I make more money from trading and I'm giving my intellectual property that I created, that's a discount. It's tuition. A DeVry tuition. Yeah. Right. That, I think that's probably why people are getting messed up. Yeah. If you go to a school, it's tuition. Yeah. Right. I think it's probably, I would put that on us. Probably the way we market things, people don't appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Somebody was talking about how they can go on YouTube and get so-and-so for free. But you I'm can't like, learn. First of all, you're not gonna get the, I think the most valuable thing is mm -hmm. the community for me. The knowledge, the strategies, the consultations, the mm -hmm. sessions, number one, that's, that value is you yeah. can't get that nowhere else, yeah. right? If I do a pop-in strategy session, based on what I've been seeing in the market right now with yeah. my peoples, they're gonna be able to execute all their information yeah. and greatly increase their strategies to increase their return, yeah. right? Versus, I just give them some information and leave them alone. And or you in a community with people who know less and people who know more. Mm -hmm. So you get to teach and you get to learn. And that's the best way to be in an environment. People giving you signals. People, some of my students bring things to me I know nothing about. Yeah. So the community aspect is what you don't get from yeah. a YouTube page. This episode is brought to you by Infinite Wealth Strategies. I mean, and that's why I ask everybody, if YouTube was all that you needed, why aren't you got rich from YouTube? Like, I only care about outcome, especially as a dad. Once I had my child, the only thing that mattered to me was results. And don't get me wrong, if you, there's certain people that can get rich off YouTube. Because if they all already market have, money is, they already have a masterful mindset. Yeah. Because the disciplined mind is the key to it all. Yeah. That a certain mindset that you have, yeah. when you discipline, you understand the value of things, you know how to think long term, you know how to strategize, mm -hmm. you know how to put together a plan and execute off that plan. Yeah. You give that person information, yeah. they go pull gold out of it. Yeah, but I you think most people me? just don't execute quick enough or 
sometimes they just may not want to hear it from me. That's fine. I don't. But this is the thing that I love. When, when you can actually invest in trade, no one else's opinion matters. That's why I don't give a fuck about media. People are like, you need to be nicer, you need to do this, da da da. And I'm like, I hear you. But almost everybody I met in media outside of Charlemagne, Chad, EYOU, is broke. So how valuable is the media then? Like, look at all that Wendy built, whether you like her or not. For her to get called crazy, and she's going through whatever health issues, and get moved out of her career and never own that fucking show, that is crazy to me. How do, you, how do they put someone else in your show seat and say, hey, we're done with you, get out of here? That happens when you don't have enough capital. Mm. I wish somebody would try and recreate Market Mondays. Mm. Enjoy. No, nah, they can't do it. Can't do it. Many have tried. Somebody trying right now just ain't getting no legs. If, and if you want to, help people make money. I only share what I'm doing. Same, that's why our blueprints work. Mm -hmm. I'm only sharing with you what I'm doing. So, and I'll tell you all again, if you think I put in work for 15 years to be the king of the nigga traders, boy, you got me fucked <laughs> up. <laughs> boy, you got me fucked up. Have it. There's no money there. Yeah, Have man, it. You, want, you need the gloves, man. You can't no, I'm you. good. I'm just being real. Yeah. Like, because we want to compete and say, well, he's here, so let me take that from him. It's much easier to say, man, how did you get there? I want to do right. this for Forex. Why is there no Market Mondays for Forex? Mm. They'd rather try and take my, take it, you can buy it from me. I'll sell my steak any day. Go ahead, give me nine million, you can have my seat any day. Me and Trevor Shaw, bust the money down, cool, enjoy. Micah, load it up, do the clips, everything for you. It's, we choose to compete Yeah. too much. My job is to get to Goldman, State Street, shout out JP Morgan, Citadel, that I'm already working with and make billions with them. Mm. That's the real goal. So even when people choose to compete, I'm like, this was a happy accident. But I've been doing this and giving out information in this space for 12 years. Mm. Only start monetizing the last four. Mm. That's the part people don't see. So whether they get mad or not about prices, if y'all get, and it made me be like, if y'all mad at them, Goldman's happy to pay them. Yeah. Dave came on and was like, low, low end, Right now, you can get a job for 10 to $19 million a year, work 40 hours a week. Frederick, who worked at Citadel, was like, man, you get 22 all day. But if you partner and you bring in four or five billion, you can probably take two and a half of those on your own. That's my goal. Mm -hmm. Price is just really a way to weed out those who don't really want it. I like that. Yeah. I think that that's necessary. Especially like, you know, with futures, right? Futures is a very liquid market, yep. right? I think that people should, if, I, also I don't think that people truly understand. So They choose not to understand. They, they don't understand. They don't understand shit about crypto and NFTs and all of a sudden everybody was buying. Yeah, man. This, 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 these opportunities that are present right now, yeah. that you only have a small window to mm -hmm. really be 100% about every single day. Mm -hmm. Like, there's really, if, 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 if there's some advice I want to give somebody that wants to build wealth, is you have to do it every single day. Absolutely. You understand me? That you should sacrifice every other form of entertainment, some of your rest, friends, all of that, and treat it like a boarding school. Yeah where you're completely isolated with the education and information on yeah. a consistent and daily basis. Yeah. There's so much money in NFTs. I mean, the, the, I hate saying the, the, the acronyms NFTs at this yeah. point because it, sh it has to evolve yeah. to where people just understand this token industry, yeah. this digital asset industry. Yeah. This digital asset industry is literally creating 100 millionaires and billionaires yeah. at the highest level. Yeah. You understand me? I'm yeah. talking about the highest level. What, so what are, before we you go to your next question, what are like the books and publications people need to read? Or in a, the real ones? Because when you came on Market Mondays, I tried to get the number of pages you was reading per day, you didn't give it to me. I need the real number. So books are tough because books are capsules. Yeah. You understand me? In an ever-changing landscape. Yeah. Um, I like the future of money. That's a great one. I yeah. love the future of money. Yeah. Um, I, I got a book over there right yeah, now. Yeah, you dropped it. I did, yeah. 
Where that book at? I don't be remembering titles, so it'll be hard for yeah. me to give them. Yeah, Beyond Bitcoin is a dope book. Yeah. Um, uh, Infinite Wealth Strategies is a dope book. Great book. NFT Equation is a dope book. Yeah. Um, because what I try to focus on is studying the gen the high level, the generality of the concepts. Yeah. Which allow me to then see everything in a different capacity, because mm -hmm. now I'm coming from an informed place. Yeah. Then anything that BlackRock puts out when they put out their studies, you want to go through all of those pages and study every single aspect. Yeah. Somebody just put out a study today. Was it JP Morgan or Solano? Somebody put out a great study today about worldwide adoption of cryptocurrency. So okay. today I studied that. Maybe took me about an hour, two hours to just w go through everything. What's the adoption rate right now worldwide? What percentage? Um, right now, probably scaling around 5%. You understand me? It's very small. Wow. Like the internet is at 51%, yeah. right? So the internet, just think about that. The internet is not 100%. The internet yeah. is only 51%, and this is where we at with the internet. Yeah. So crypto is at 4 to 5%. What well, like happens 1992 when it goes to 10? Yeah. Like 10%. Or 30%. 30% yeah, yeah. is it's a new world. Yeah. 50% it's a new planet. Like yeah. this shit is different. Yeah. But the breakdown was given, it's like Central Africa just dropped them a, a first, second country to create a uh, currency out of crypto, right? Mm. Um, and of course, then you had Nigeria where they were, uh, first they was telling people they couldn't do it. And they only yeah. did that to throw in a CBDC coin. Of course. Right? Um, and it was given a breakdown from cur uh, crypto curiosity, crypto adoption, right? Um, and then the crypto holders. Yeah. And they seen a dope point where a lot more women are now being adopted into it. But that's why mm. I talked about education because yeah. what was found out was that education is now one of the best ways to onboard people into this space. Gotcha. When it was more word of mouth at first, yeah. right? So my friend in it, I just jumped in. But now education is the best segue yeah. into getting more people to become onboarded into this space. Because gotcha. okay. people need the knowledge. They need strategies. They need ways to go about it, right? Yeah. Um, so they're going to go to YouTube, they're going to get into courses, they're going to sit down and get a real education because this space is not easy to infiltrate. Yeah. It later, literally creates, it requires some work until a ton of work. Yeah. there's an ease, and that's where the business models come in, where a person creates a business model where adoption is easier because you don't have to understand it, you're just in it. Yeah. But that danger is how we got to the current banking system that we have today. True that people are in, they have bank accounts, but don't understand the bank, Yeah. right? Didn't understand, you know, bank runs until last year, Yeah. right? So that's the danger of not getting the education in this space and people wanting to skip steps. So beyond those books, right? Like there are YouTube channels to where you should have at least probably 10 YouTube channels that you follow. Yeah. I, would, I follow maybe like 30, 40 different Twitter accounts that keep threads yeah. on my timeline that I can read on a daily basis. Do you have any favorites that you can mention? I don't giving... remember their names off top. Gotcha. That's my problem. Yeah. There's some really dope ones that yeah. I just don't even remember their names. Yeah. I be like, that's my problem you with a lot of stuff. Through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I follow way. them and I follow their knowledge more than their name. Yeah. So it's not a brand name, but the knowledge is kind of branded to where it's yeah. like, when I see this knowledge designed a certain way, I'm yeah. going to read it. You know it's them. It. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to go through that whole yeah. thing. But I think starting with BlackRock, though, they the way that they put out their reports, I think is solid because mm -hmm. it gives you industry wide reports at a high level because yeah. they're spending millions of dollars and they're utilizing all kind of crazy algorithms yeah. and they have resources that the average person can't get. Then, of course, just going on Google every single day, type in crypto, NFTs, DAO, Decentral, yeah. whatever you want to. And it's going to give you the top reports circulating. Every other place, every other media outlet is going to pull from, from Google those, yeah. and then start making their memes, start making their posts, start making their content around yeah. what's been populated by Google. Yeah. So that's still the best source to go to. Yeah. Twitter, Google, YouTube, books. You on Substack? Have you no. looked there? No. Substack is like a, some a newsletter. And Reddit, of course. Yeah, Reddit's amazing. But yeah, Substack is like people can get paid. It's like OnlyFans for authors, if you will. Let me see if I got some people on Twitter. I'll give... I mean, I'm giving some people some shout out. The Web3 world will love me for this anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, but there's a bunch of good people that write on Substack where you can get information on invest in crypto and it helps make it a lot easier. But 10 YouTube channels, probably 50 people on Twitter. And the more you like just immerse yourself in the space and do the same thing for stocks, trading, real estate, business development, 
Um, and once you follow that formula, like you'll know everything that you need to know really inside of a year or two. Most that, people just really don't absorb enough. No, they don't absorb enough yeah. at all and don't realize how much is required to be in this space at a high level. Yeah. When I talk to the guys, uh, I talk to the guys over at XRP, they sales team. Yeah. And uh, we was talking about the upcoming cases with their lawyers and things yeah. of that nature. And it's looking pretty good. Look good for them. It's looking pretty good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that hit, that hits. And you've been preaching the gospel about for it for a minute. while now. Yeah. And, and it's been ugly for a while. But it's been ugly, but it still maintains in the top. Yeah. So what happens when that goes up? Yeah. But somebody said, Early, it ain't just all what you know is who you know to that point. Like, once you get into this space, it will start making sense to you to be around those spaces. Like, yeah. there's events in Miami. There's events somewhere probably in your city. Yeah. You want to get in those rooms. You want you to fly to. to those places to get knowledge before it gets out to the general public. Yeah. Right? Like, there was, for the board Ape Yacht thing, there was a deck that was circulating about how they were going to do their investments in the layout. Right. Mm. So that's why a lot of people knew. And almost to the T, everything has been happening based on that layout that they circulated. Yeah. Right. So a lot of people that's in that community had just been looking at that as their thesis towards this is why I'm going to buy another mutant eight. This is why I'm going to buy yeah. ApeCoin. This is why I'm going to do this. Yeah. Right. And it's like if you're like when you see people in those communities making moves, getting money, the best thing you can do is ask them, how can I pay you for knowledge? Absolutely. They might give it to you for free, yeah, yeah. but the fact that you value you them enough to offer, they will give you some information. They might, yeah. cause they might not have time and they'd be like, man, let me just, I'll send you this link. Yeah. I'll just tell you this. Yeah. But you, why would you watch somebody make millions of dollars and not ask them how you can be a value to them so yeah. that you can get into circulation? And a lot of times the money will get you there faster because people often ask like, what can I do to bring value? My number one question is always like, what are you best at? Because I want to leverage what are you are great at to help me, then I can help you. When you guys are asking that, make sure if you don't have a resource to help or you're great at something, offer to pay. And like, you, like most people who offer to pay me in person, I turn them down and I put them in for free. Like when, we, when I was in uh, Mexico, like the two girls that we ran into, it's like, oh, I love you, I appreciate you. I was shocked. Yeah. But I'm like, I, it was good energy. A lot of times, you, once you ask, if you're hungry, and there's a difference to versus a person who's asking just to maybe get something versus I can tell you've been on the journey and really diving in deep. If you offer to pay, man, you'll get all the answers that you need. But even here, like you guys see me, I'm asking them a lot of questions because I don't know the next time I may get them on the phone. Pomp Liano uh, is a good one. Pomp's good. Yeah. You should have Pomp on here. All right, so I'm gonna name a bunch of people okay. based on who I just currently have been following. And this is not in a particular order of value or non-value, right? So there's a guy named Rohan Argawal for crypto security. Uh -huh. um, Alex Wilson for, nah, we're going to skip Alex because I don't know. Actually, I met this guy, Alex, Did out you? in Miami, so I ain't okay. going to diss the brother. Because okay. I met them. They make dope projects, actually, so you want to follow him as well. Um, damn, man, you be asking me to put people on. I'm going to have to go through, but I'm only doing this because you asked. You understand me? Um, I met the good people over at Cointelegraph. Shout out to them because okay. they posted me up and everything, and there were some solid people that I met, yeah. you feel me, showing good love. Uh, NFT Llama, um, the possessed NFT Kiwama. Always shout out my brother, um, Chicago Crypto Bully. Okay, solid follow. brother. If you don't know him, yeah, you got to get follow. up on him. All, I, I always shout out... Um, Ish Millie, that's my bro. He been making millions in this space. Solid brother, so let me shout in. out my black people. Yeah. You understand me? Um, a Solidity developer to find uh, follow is NFT Doyer. Um, Micah Johnson doing some dope things in this space yeah. with a cool dreams. Yeah. So people don't know, that's my first NFT that I ever bought. Really? Okay. It was last year, I forget exact date that it was. Uh, I think it was in February. I think it was February 21st, maybe. Um, first NFT I bought, and mostly because I did a little research on and listening to him and his community and what the long-term plans was for yeah. that project. Yeah. So they had a short minting window where you're the first person that gets to buy into it. You got to pay the gas fees. So I decided to buy two. Okay. Um, and I'll give the strategy that I think is proper in the NFT space when it comes to this. So I bought two. Of course, I bought two, so if one goes up, I get to sell one, and then it covers the price of what I just bought, right? Yeah. But I think you should buy three when you're going for that strategy, and I'll give the breakdown on why. But 
so for my first NFT was completely a success now, now that I can tell the story. So yeah. I held it for a long time. It's been a year yeah. since I bought it and I'm able to really cash out on one. So the first one, I bought both of them for $1,000 each. Now when I bought it, I felt crazy when I bought it. It's yeah. my first NFT. I'm like, I just literally bought some digital, you know, thing. Yeah, yeah. And I understood NFTs enough to understood what I was doing, but it still felt weird buying your first one. Yeah. You understand me? I'm, and this was before anybody could validate that this made any sense. Yeah. <laughs> so I bought that and I'm like, damn, I just spent $2,000 on some digital goddamn motion pictures. Yeah. This is crazy. What the hell am I doing? But I was like, you know what? I get to tell this story later. I'm going to be brilliant. Yeah. But I'm going to just let these sit until the story is good enough to tell it. <laughs> so I bought it for $1,000 each and recently, and he had been putting out more NFTs, but it wasn't really moving the needle at the price that much. Yeah. I seen some secondary sales on Nifty Gateway for 2000 3000 So I'm like, okay, well, now I know that the price of it is worth more than what I originally bought it for. Yeah. But it's not exciting enough to make me sell it. Yeah. Recently, I got two airdrops for holding both of them, right? Mm, the airdrops okay. were minting pass. The minting pass said that if you hold this NFT, then you're going to get airdropped two more NFTs, mm. right? If you hold it on a certain day. So they do what they call um, screenshots. So if you hold it on this day, they screenshot all of those and basically register it for the airdrop. Nice. So if you sell okay. it afterwards, you no longer get the airdrop, right? Yeah. So I decided to say, okay, cool. I know through speculation and hype, this is his biggest move thus far. Yeah. He doing brand deals. He got Pusha T. You understand me? It's a lot of hype around this. This is my time to sell at least one of my NFTs, recoup my original expenses. Right. Yeah. So I think I sold it for about 1.5 ETH. So I got about. So what happened is actually I listed it on on Nifty, and like 30 seconds after I listed, somebody bought it for 5,000, mm. and I instantly regretted it. Like, dang. Damn. Yeah. 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 I must have sold it under. I was tripping. Yeah. But I had listed it not knowing how hype it was going to be. So I thought I would have more time to list and then increase the price later. So boom. I sell that and I got these two passes. Now I know what's going to happen on the days of I'm buying the news, selling the rumor, right? Or reverse. Yeah. Right? Buy the rumor, sell the news. So I'm like, maybe a day before I'm going to sell one of these passes and then I'll actually keep one of the actual NFTs. Okay. So the day of it gets to about three ETH. That's the height of it. I'm yeah. like, let me sell these pads. Now people are speculating on what the value of it's going to be because they don't get to see the art. Yeah. So I'm selling the speculation. Yeah. You understand me? I'm not about to hold on to it no matter yeah. what happened. So I sold that one. I got my three ETH. So now I'm about 4.5 ETH in, you understand me, from $2,000, right? Yeah. So now I done made my money, right? Um, so now I say I'm going to keep this next one until they do the airdrop. So I keep that one, get the airdrop, that one currently around maybe two ETH right now, right? Yeah. But I'm gonna hold on to it. So what would happen with this project, and this is why I like it, is he did what they call a Dutch auction. Mm -hmm. The Dutch auction where the lowest price wins the bid, yeah. based on what the community wants the price to be, yeah. and he was gonna refund anybody, some crazy stuff he had going on. But the contract wasn't the most solid. Now mm. the contract wasn't the most solid and the community was telling him like, yo, there's some issues with your contract. You should probably change it before you do this mint. Yeah. Now, May May got a little cocky and was like, y'all just trying to throw some FUD over here. Y'all yeah. know this is about to be, yeah. you know what I mean, one of them ones. Once again, now listening to counsel. Now listening yeah. to wise counsel. The day of it happens, they end up losing $35 million. They had some issues with the contract. So the beauty in this Web3 space is there's people that literally, that's, that's what they do. They go in contracts and try to help projects out yeah. so the community don't lose money. The one thing I've seen in this Web3 space is the ethics of, uh, uh, with people making money that I haven't seen in another industry of business ever. Really? Okay. There's an ethics that I've never seen. There's like everybody is here to be nice and cool and get money together and like we yeah. looking out for each other and like, bro, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't yeah. do that. And that's not capitalism at all. And no, right? no, no, yeah. Capitalism is anti all of that shit. It's like, bro, we need to make dog. money. If people don't make no money, it's on them. Like, yeah. people don't like you if you're in that space with that energy. Yeah. Right? So it's interesting. That's the way business should be done, by the way. It should be. Yeah. But you got to remember, a lot of people left their corporate jobs from that type of energy to get yeah. into this space. Yeah. So they feel like, why would I get into a new space if it's the same exact atmosphere? Absolutely. So they want something that allows them to feel free. There's people yeah. that care about each other. You're not just making money, but yeah. you're part of a revolution. You're part of a change in a movement. Yeah. But that's a side note. And that's not everywhere. Yeah. But 
he ended up doing that, but he took the loss on himself and said, you know what, I'm going to give all you people refunds and you're still going to get your airdrop, even though there mm. was an error in the contract. Honorable. So the community turns around. Some people are like, yo, I don't even need the, air, the refund. And he like, no, we're going to do it anyway, right? Stand up on, you understand me, his business principles and what their long-term vision is. So they go into their treasury, they give everybody their refunds, and the community responds with overwhelming love. Like, yeah. man, that's solid. Like, this is the most yeah. solid way that you take an L. Yeah. Right. So now people really love their airdrops because yeah. now it has more meaning and more value. Yeah. So whatever else he does in this space, I think it's going to be successful. Yeah. But that's the story of my first NFT. That's incredible. You understand me. Um, but the strategy of buying three was essentially just saying that if you buy three, let's say one goes up three X, you sell it. Yeah. Now you've covered your costs. You wait for the second to go up to a price that you like. You understand maybe me? Maybe 5X. Yeah, maybe yeah. 5X. That, sh that stuff looked beautiful. It felt like it's a, this was a good play, maybe mm -hmm. some life changing or whatever. You sell it. Yeah. You don't try to hold on to dear life, yeah. right? Then you hold on to the other one for all the benefits that will come along with the project and the reason you bought it for in the first place. Gotcha. Airdrops, coins, lands, whatever is attached to a physical items, utility. Yeah. You understand me? And you don't sell that one. Right, you hold on that one to dear life, or you wait till it gets to a life-changing position, and then it just gotta go to another owner's hands. That'll be what, 20X? Yeah, 20X, something, like that, something 20X. crazy. Yeah. You understand yeah. me? Whatever you think that the peak of that project could be, yeah. you really don't wanna try, the worst thing is to go all the way up and have to come all the way down. Let it come all the way down, yeah. It's the worst thing. It's nothing, yeah. no worse than Always have a predetermined exit. Because it no may not ever go back up again. Yeah. There's no determination that yeah. this go defy gravity once more. Yeah. So it's like, once you, if you sell, you know, nobody ever lost taking profits. Absolutely. That's the key to yeah. it. So with this NFT space, there's a lot of strategies that you can employ with this space. You know, uh, my students in their Discord, they basically... You have certain projects, we rate where these projects are valuable, the price to get in, yeah. whether this is solid or not. And then that's when the community takes what they know and apply it to audit the project on gotcha. whether this is valuable or not. So even if I go in there right now and I drop a project, they go look at this, take the knowledge that they've already been imparted, and, uh, yeah, so audit and be like, nah, he's it's on like it. this one. Yeah. Some BS. Yeah. <laughs> like, but that makes them dependent on themselves. And yeah. that's what they realize. Like, it ain't about you got some grand wizard telling you all the magical plays. I gave you the game. Yeah. So even if I got a bad play, you now have decision-making markers in your mind to make a better decision for yourself. And structure to know if it's good or not. Exactly. Because you're the same with companies, business. Like, those rules and systems matter more than anything. Because mm -hmm. once a per you can now you can take that and pass it down. Now your kids will know how to buy real estate, businesses, land rights, water, with the same rules that you're giving them from crypto, I think that's incredibly yeah. powerful. I mean, why wouldn't you evaluate a business the same way you evaluate a business? It's simple. To. NFTs are a business. Yes, yeah, a business. There's a technology people utilizing to create, sell, service, products, yeah. you understand me, art, whatever, it's all the business. Yeah. So I'm gonna apply business principles to businesses. You have to. Just makes sense. Yeah. How much money you made in the stock market? A ton. <laughs> a ton. <laughs> I can't tell the number. <laughs> I, I got, got a dollar or two over. A hard transition. Yeah, hard transition. Um, you made a million dollars in the stock market, right? Some say I have. Some say you have. Do, do, is it a, is it a seven-figure per year skill? Um, if people listen to me, yeah. I, I'll say if I chose not to work again, I wouldn't have to work. Are you able to pull out seven figures per year in the market? Some say I can, but I can't. I mean, where I'm from, like people. While I grew up in East Chicago, people was killing over 500 bucks, like to this day. That's why I don't do the extra parading of jewelry cars. Cause where I'm from, it's like, where you from? Yeah. yeah they get to Oakland, before they get to them, five, 600. Yeah. Um, but that's when people are like, hey, you're just talking about it. I'm like, no, I manifested it in the market first and then talked about it. I feel like a lot of people are trying to like talk about it and then monetize that. No, I did it before I, I said a word. What's your freedom number? For my family, for six generations, I need at least 300 million. What about you and why you? My own personal? Yeah, your own personal. Hit it. Huh? I already hit it. That's when people are like, yo, you should do this. I'm like, man, the shackles off me. I, I bought my freedom. And no one helped me. Like, the people who helped me, and I appreciate art so much more now, 
I probably talked to Art about investing maybe five times. Art was already rich. He was like, well, I'm gonna keep talking to you and I'm good. And that sound is so fucking harsh, but I get him. Because if you want it, you're gonna do it. Like I cut, I stopped watching cable, I think in 2012. I haven't watched cable television since then. I may watch maybe 11 shows a week while I'm working. I haven't seen one live NBA game first quarter to fourth quarter since 2010. The only football game I've seen first quarter, four, fourth quarter, was when Tom Brady won in Tampa Bay Super mm. Bowl. All my time goes into my craft. So we in a recession. Mm -hmm. How are we in a recession? America's been, technically, if you look since 2007 without quantitative easing, we would have never came out. No one wants to say it, but America isn't as great as it used to be. It's on its decline. Mm, so Trump was trying to make America great again. He tried to, but it didn't happen. Biden's doing, you can argue, a worse job mm. than even Trump did. So mm. with inflation. Does Biden know he's president? He's aware, some days. Some days. Yeah, so. America has done a great job of raising capital, using the Federal Reserve banking system, quantitative easing to patch the holes in our country. But everything's leaking at one time. And now China, my biggest fear is that China is going to use Africa and Latin America to take us over. And we're getting close. I've been saying this since 2012. And people are like, no, it's impossible. I'm like, you haven't studied how empires work. So even when you get to a point of this having this level of contention, uh, men not providing, this has happened before in Rome. When men are now not looked at as men, it was a changing of the guard and a turning point for the fall of that empire. Mm. We just, we have mismanaged the country. We sold everything. We don't really produce anything anymore. We owe too much debt. And that's when people are like, debt is good. I'm like, debt is good if you don't have to pay it back. But when it gets called, what do you do? So if you owe $2 million and you have a net worth of 500,000, you're underwater, it's basic fucking math. People don't want the discipline of it. Um, it's mismanagement of our country and our assets. Can America get back from its deficit? No. I'm like America is bankrupt. America is legally bankrupt. I mean, we owe trillions of dollars. How do you erase that? You can't. Quality of life is down. Education is down. Water quality is worse. Air quality is worse. Testosterone in men is worse and lower than it was 30 years ago. Food quality is worse. What advantage do we have? Uh, we really artificial don't. intelligence? Arguably, but we don't even have that running at scale. And that's why even with Elon, Dogecoin, I've told everybody, if the greatest assets in America are now run by foreign entities, what advantage do we have? The only company that people really love in the United States is Apple. You can argue Tesla, but Elon's Dutch. So you can mm. put two and two together. Mm. Dogecoin is a foreign currency. We, we've lost everything that made the country special. What is America's greatest asset? Uh, the people. That was always a business, import-export business. Slavery was America's first startup. Mm, that's a super fact. It's a super fact. Yeah. Like, the dollars were backed by people. Absolutely. Like, black men, the managing of black men and women was always the greatest skill set for mm -hmm. white men to gain wealth in this country. Yep. It was yep. the skill set. Yeah. So, the transitioning of record labels, like, when you look at the average job that black men have, black men work as clerks and managers and things yeah. of that nature in companies. Yeah. That's what the average black man does yeah. in this country that allows them to have a lofty position, making six figures or whatsoever. Yep. But then in every aspect of that space, there's a white man managing that energy for them, and that white man is getting wealth based on the management of black bodies. Yeah. Intellect, knowledge, energy, right? Efficiency, the whole nine. So one could argue that the business model of America has never changed. It just went into multiple different Yeah, it's just in different industries. industries. Yeah. Whether it was insurance, banking, hedge fund, capital management, human capital. So that's why people compare NFL 
managing of black bodies to the plantation managing of black bodies. It's workforce, workforce. We say that we care, but we really don't because I don't see anybody mom taking their kid out of, out of football camps. If we really care, we wouldn't like, if I say that I don't want my son to be in the streets, I'm not going to let him jump on a porch, let alone drop him off to dope boy camp. You got to pick. And I know, some, what do you do? Are there other alternatives? Man, there's more information now than ever. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in this vicious cycle of putting ourselves in the industries that will not pay us and will not allow us to be free. No, that's a super fact. Even for rappers, like rap is the most dangerous profession right now that a black man can have. Yeah. With some of the lowest pay. So even when those artists die, call up to the label and ask them, how much do you get insurance money when an artist on your label dies? Yeah. They'll never tell you. But do you think all these black bodies are just going down and then the album does better, the merch does better, insurance money? Publishing, where does that go? It's a dangerous game. So this recession, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think about gold? Um, gold and silver. Silver isn't the best because it's not the one that banks love the most. Even with gold, like it is a good hedge. But if we go to utility, like uh, we'll talk about it like the same way in the NFT space. If we went to hell on earth, and all electricity was cut, what would you do with gold? People say you can trade with it, but it's too heavy. Gold is a great hedge if society is running as normal. If society goes to hell, food, shelter, and guns are the most important thing to be able to survive. I know people are going to argue with me about it. No, no, I can agree with that. Guns, of course. Yeah. Ammo, shelter. food, clothing, shelter, protection, yeah. right? That's money. But then once that gets some level of establishment, mm -hmm. gold becomes and silver becomes money. Hard to transport, though. And Hard the cultures transport. that we're in, let's say your car breaks down, you got to walk 16 blocks in L.A. How long will I be able to keep that gold on me? It makes you oh, a target. I'm going to have to target. stash it. Yeah, unless you have bunker, land. You know how they're like, boy, lights go out, hood come out, choppers come out. You ain't lugging no gold 14, 15 no, blocks. No, 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 no. Gotta leave it but, behind. Okay, so that's Armageddon, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so that's a drastic scenario, right? Is it? I mean, in the sense that once you're there, then the idea of money is completely different, yeah. right? But let's say that we're not in the scenario of... The depths of that kind the of... The depths of yeah. that kind of reality, yeah. but we're still in a reality where money is transitioning because... We, we in a space where the ideas around money are finally being reperceived. Yeah. You understand me? And what is money is in a completely new atmosphere and yeah. it's up for interpretation at this point. But that's because the 99% of the value of the dollars died since we came off the gold standard. I really think that all the banks are pushing this crypto thing so they can have more wealth. Mm. People tell me it's decentralized, but then when I'm like, hey, JP Morgan had a very influential impact on Ethereum. Mm. Google it. Yeah, now decentralized is a great buzzword and a great idea, mm -hmm. but the reality of it is most platforms are. But I want, I want to get on gold a little more, right? Okay. So, because if you go look at human history, gold has always been one of the most seeked out valuable commodities yeah. towards man, right? right? Whether you're talking about the Anunnaki, the Egyptians, you understand me, and just modern man, period. Yeah has always utilized gold in some sort of form fabric of money or even utility, Yeah. right? Uh, when I was just in Egypt, you know, at the top of the obelisk, they yeah. had put the gold up there. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah. And in a society, gold always finds a way to, to have, have value. value. I agree. Always. If there was one commodity I would lean on, it would definitely would be gold. Definitely not diamonds. People ask that. I can't see a word. I've never seen a movie, of have already a movie where there was a bunch of gold around and a person walked past it. There, there's That's been true. movies where they have a bunch of dollars around a person That's walk true. past it because that gold, I mean, you know, I got collodial gold, yeah. so I'm going to sip me some yeah, gold. I'm going to yeah, go yeah. put into a form of electrolysis and have me, you know what I mean, the energy drink on the market. Yeah. We're going we to do something with the gold. We're going to utilize it and some sort of standard. It can be medical practices, whatever, because in the building of any civilization, gold will find its way for high utility. Way value. 
Absolutely. Because of its electrical, uh, electrical conductivity, you're yeah. going to find a way to use it as a resource. Yeah. So therefore, gold has an intrinsic value that can never go down to zero. Mm -hmm. And man will not allow himself to see something of value and then pass it up. Gold is a very powerful substance. The reason why people, especially, for example, people of color, really love gold is because it's one of the first things we were mining on this planet as a resource, a resource for advanced technology. And we were given the gold by the gods so we can actually adorn ourselves with it. We attributed that kind of value to it. Also as a thank you from the gods that we mined it, but they also allowed us to keep some of it. That's why we love to wear gold, okay? Now, what would advanced beings want with gold? Gold is a technological element, okay? For example, Gold is phenomenal with electricity. If you have a copper wire and you put electricity in one end, when you get to the other end, you're not gonna have the same amount of power. Why is that? You lose energy in friction, okay? With gold, you get 100% input, 100% output. Another thing about gold is you can take it down to some of the smallest microprocessor levels and still be able to make the connections. So gold is needed for things like traveling into space, computer-hardened, radiation-proof, uh, cir computer circuit boards need to be have gold in them. Also, it's a great reflector of radiation. So you, you know, uh, shields for astronauts. Even in cars, for example, one of my cars has gold flakes in the actual glass to reflect radiation out. A lot of your European cars, high-end European cars, will have those gold flakes inside the windows also to reflect out radiation so you don't have to buy a window tint. Solar, uh, 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 you know, satellites have gold panels on, on them as well to reflect radiation. So gold is a technological use and the fact that they made us mine or they had us mining it for them to me proves that you know we were given gold and we adorn it, we, we, we love it and we adorn ourselves with it because we attributed value to it based on what the ancient tablets say it was given to us by the gods. Even down into the Yucatan and the Mayan everywhere you go you see the same exact story. Gold is technological. Now also what you find in, in Egypt in the land of Kim they found that we had something called powder, powdered gold or monatomic gold. Now monatomic gold, they discovered a special technique. And this is also written in the uh, Egyptian uh, records and also in the Sumerian records. So you know that these two civilizations collaborated with each other. They took this gold into a monatomic format and, and created an orum and added it to a liquid. They call it the elixir of the gods. They would then drink this and then the same thing that it does for electronics, it does for the body. It would heal your body, it could go into your brain and speed up your synapses between your thoughts. So all of a sudden, where if you're drinking alcohol, the synapses slow down, that's how you get slurred speech, you slow down, you can't walk, you can't even drive. When you take the gold, you drink it, it goes into the brain and speeds up the synapses. It makes your brain more efficient, makes you more powerful. It also, uh, in my personal opinion, it also is great for the, reversing the aging process. You know, so that's why I've been taking the gold water for 20 years now. So I think it's a phenomenal product and it's something that I think everybody should be on. It's going to help you with your immune system. It's going to help you with your brain capacity. It's going to help you with uh, healing uh, injuries and things in your body that you didn't even know you had. It's going to fix that problem too. So gold water is definitely where it's at. Yeah, right. Agree. So that's why gold has an interesting place with human beings. Yeah. Right, because it has a value that is evident, mm -hmm. right? It's just because gold is not in abundance, we don't seek more utility in ways to use gold. That's true. Right, the same way with Bitcoin. Yeah. Bitcoin, a person will rather just hold Bitcoin and leverage it rather than figure out ways I can spend and or use it. Yeah. Right, because it's like, that's why it's, cons it's not a gold standard yet because the decrease in Bitcoin like present day down 15% right now and bit gold being up 4% and yeah. possibly going to 2100, yeah. a person to look at gold as a hedge. Now, gold is old money. You understand mm -hmm. I me? Mean? Gold, oil, drugs is God, is what yeah. they consider that to be. Yeah. So the reality of gold being a savior, no. There, in the asset classes, there is no one savior. Yeah, and diversification. I stress to all my friends, like, in the purest form of me teaching is when I talk to Xander, I'm like, never marry one asset. You have to know how to invest in them all. Because no, if you have 24 assets, 28, all, of, all 28 are not going to fall. Mm -hmm. So if you're in crypto, gold, long-term investing, real estate, business, angel investing, venture capital, royalties, 
there's no way all of those are going to fall apart. Right. But see, so you got precious metals. Precious metals always going to have intrinsic value. Mm -hmm. I think, like, now I've, I've seen recently people have been stealing the converter pieces on the cars yeah. to get the platinum and stuff out yeah. of it because of how it utilizes it to convert pollution or whatever in the air. So, like, this shit like that gives it an intrinsic value yeah. that is just known. And then, of course, we're not... The idea of having a supply issue is based on where they're sourcing it, not yeah. the fact that we don't have enough source of it, right? Because yeah. the reality of it, Africa has enough, right? More than but enough, But if you yeah. turn Africa into the industry that saves the world, those are trillions of dollars flowing into Africa building up new infrastructure out there. So if China overtakes Africa as a chess piece, then how much more valuable are they than the United States of America? They, they have it. They have the leverage. Mm -hmm. They have everything that they need. Yeah. That's why it would be more comment upon black Americans specifically to go to Africa and make those deals and build up the infrastructure to supply the rest of the world and or just build it on the continent because Africa is going to have like a 50 percent increase of population. Yeah. You understand me over the next 30 to 40 years. Yeah. So it's like it, with the ability to be able to take care of your people with the minerals and resources of the land. And with the adoption rate that we're seeing with Africa and crypto, mm -hmm. they have the ability to be the number one continent on planet Earth. Because they're the only continent on the planet Earth that doesn't need resources from any other continent. Yeah. Outside themselves. But it's always been the number one country, continent, and company that's been pillaged the most. That's a super My plan. greatest fear is that China is going to act as Andreessen Horowitz and Africa is going to be Facebook. Mm. And it's about who control. That's the piece on the board that everyone needs. And if China has that and Latin America, and you have all the resources and influence, and we're starting to see it now. I was just in Mexico. Like, they're even hit Mexico pretty hard. Mm -hmm. I hear the idea of us going over there, but I want us to get us from the idea of doing something to actually doing. And that's why like, people, like, when you come off harsh, we only have a certain amount of time, man. We don't have all day to, like, and I think that comes from church, mm -hmm. from like having an idea, getting high off of the idea and then not doing. China's already taken over Africa. That's a super fact. And, and they're doing it in a way to where they're not Quietly. doing it militaristically, which a lot of countries end up doing. So China's style is to buy the influence Absolutely. and buy the countries as they go, yep. which allowed them to not destroy the infrastructure, to use what's existing and also get love from the people that's mm -hmm. there because they increase in their quality of life. I just said this at Market Mondays, there is no money in war. Everyone mm -hmm. who wants to come in and violently take over, family gets killed, your regime gets toppled. If you come in quietly and don't say anything, like a thief in the night, you'll get a lot more done. That's a super fact. Yeah. In the presence of America, the influence that America's having on the world is waning day by day. Mm -hmm. And that's always been a power, a, a power in the form of presence and or influence is how Societies maintain control, empires maintain control globally, and America yeah. is the world's police, Yeah. right? But that influence is dying because self-sufficiency is something that these countries are now seeking, mm -hmm. especially in the wake of pandemic activity of seeing reliance on supply chains and saying yeah. that what happened with Russia, we are now uh, 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 hit with another slap and awakening that this can happen to us. At any time. Once, once one person get beat with the dangers of what America just did is they made an ex the biggest example, yeah. which now has everybody with self-awareness on what they can do to never become that example as well. In an age of financial liberation. Yeah. Now, if this was done 40 years ago, it wouldn't matter because yeah, you just aren't seeing feared. all this wealth and affluence happening. But now if you're like, hey, well, if I can remove myself from the dollar, invest in crypto, partner with other countries and we create a coalition. It's dangerous, man. You have to know where you are in the ecosystem, when you can piss people off, when your power is depleted. And we're acting as if we are the superpower we were from the 1950s. It's not there. That's a fact. It's so what, what about the energy sector? We have the world wanting to transition into, you know, renewable energy sources, but the reality of that is years apart. The reality of the technology being able to do it is now. Yeah, yeah. We can make energy out of anything, right? Yeah. Um, there was a story of the guy who once was able to, you know, have his car run on H2O, mm -hmm. right? And then he ended up dying of a heart attack, right? Mm -hmm. After he successfully had it running for miles and miles. There's yeah. a brother in Africa now that has a solar power TV. You understand me? We knew that Tesla, Nikolai Tesla was yeah. able to convert um, atmospheric energy out the air energy. and to be able to pull 
that energy and to be able to create a source, yeah. right, of electricity that can, empower, that can power any and everything. It was yeah. like Wi-Fi electricity. So yeah. we know the technology exists, yeah. but where is energy going? What is, what's going to be energy in the next 30 years? I had the same conversation uh, Monday on a stock club call for Red Panda. You can't disrupt those industries unless you pay the, the VIG to them first. Those mm. companies are cartels. So if I can harness oil out of the air and I want to sell it to New Zealand, I'm going to have to go through Chevron Ford GM first and either sell my intellectual property to them or get permission to do so, mm. or I'll suffer the same fate as a kid. Yeah, because those are forces so powerful, mm -hmm. you understand me, that have so much money that it can't be counted because their money is the wealth of the mineral sources that they control. Absolutely. That there's no way Forbes can account for the yeah. amount of oil that's controlled by the Saudis. Yeah. You can't go in the ground and be like, you guys have trillion dollars worth. So they're like, Elon ain't got that kind of money. At all. You understand me? They leverage is different. But if they were to give control over that, they are a conglomerate that will be willing to do whatever to maintain this industry of power. Absolutely. So they would be not just the Saudis, but anybody that has, you know, power, power and control over those industries would do anything to make sure that the energy stays right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, because what's the purpose of, of controlling a commodity or asset to get toppled or let somebody take it over? Mm -hmm. If we're talking stri strictly in the hood, if you're the only person in L.A. that gets pills, why would you let 7,000 other neighborhoods get it when you have central control over it. So is it still a good investment? Energy? It wouldn't be a top four, but if you go five through seven, yeah. And anytime oil doubles, that's when you know you're in a recession. Because mm. oil was down for a while. Um, but you have to know what cycle we're in. So if we're at the bottom like how we were last year when oil went negative, um, and even if you never trade futures, it will help you to look at it every week to know what's gonna come. So if oil went negative, for a brief moment, it had to come. Like, all of the oil in existence was not gonna go away. So it would help you to understand how to time the market and then get in when, and have opportunities that are there. Even like when lumber took off earlier this year, you knew it was gonna come back down. So knowing how to time all the commodities uh, is really helpful because there's no one else's job to make you rich, financially free, or sustainable, other than you. That's a fact. So energy, a four on your list of 10? Fit, like fifth, yeah, I'll probably fifth. go fifth, yeah. So, okay, so what about artificial intelligence? That's one of the big ones I'm most excited about. That nanotechnology. And uh, wait a minute, what's one, of, what's one of your favorite oil stocks? I don't have a favorite oil stock, honestly. Because um, it's not in my personal portfolio in my top 10. So I wouldn't, I'll be lying. Like, I mean, if I had to pick one, it'd be maybe Chevron, but I don't have a, a one in my top 10 right now. But I, AI. I was trading some MRO and uh, I mean, it's a good trade. Did great. But would I you mean, hold it's, it? It's all time, well, I think things at all time high right now. Yeah. From like, it was low, low. Yeah, yeah. Last year, the yeah. year before, like low, low. Yeah. So I remember the point where this girl asked me one time, I went into the store, and she was like, I'll give you a discount, and you tell me one stock. Mm. And I told her MRO, and I think it had to be a like 18. I don't yeah. remember what it was, but it was yeah. low, low. Yeah. That's I don't know if she took the advice. If she did, congrats to you, you made yeah, a ton congrats. of money. If not, you, you did good. Um, Put a yes in the chat if I made you. For real. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, if you have to invest in oil or crypto, which one? Because it's also oh, no, a battle of asset classes. I would treat oil like a, a hedge. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like safe. Yeah. You understand me? Rather than trying to get rich off of it. Yeah. Like I wouldn't. I wouldn't look at oil as a class because it's a. It's a. In a currently in a fight. Like yeah. energy is in a fight where, the will of the people want to see the the politics and the oh, will of the people want to see new energy. Well, well, but the reality real? of the world and the industry, hasn't caught up to that. The same companies that own oil right now are going to own renewable energy. Will own the windmills. Anything that's harvested out of it, they're going to own it all. Mm. There is no, even with crypto, like, people are like, it's different from the banks. All the banks own the crypto. Well, crypto is energy. True. Crypto will be considered the industry, the energy industry. Now, of course, they're looking at it from, like, it's not ethical, but the reality is when you look at the numbers, you understand me, 
they overinflate it because somebody is paying somebody to put out these reports, yeah. right? Because crypto ain't really doing much. I mean, because even last year when it was like how much energy it takes to create Bitcoin, that report was a fucking lie. I'm like, it was all completely a lie. Like, come on. Like, it takes less. I think I read the report yesterday. To mine Bitcoin is less than like running a dryer on like low tumble. Yeah. So that was propaganda yeah. in there. But like as far as energy, the sector, the way business has always worked is if I own a considerable portion of the market, I'm going to keep every, even the, like when I like we the people. We the people don't control any narratives or any policies. It's just the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. That we the people, like the culture, that's used to give people a rallying cry to help bring in liquidity to help the banks at the top make that thing a viable use case. The same ones that you guys are fighting against in crypto are the same ones that are profiting the most off of it. So let's, 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 let's talk about crypto a little more then. So we know that crypto is not, the idea of crypto, of course, was that you create something that is decentralized. It's not yeah. owned by the government, not owned by the man, not owned by yeah. institutional power. The people actually have the ability to be their own banking Beautiful system. idea. Sovereignty was the yeah. idea. Complete sovereignty is yeah. the, the dream of human beings on this planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Because we have been ruled by masters through every cycle and empire since the beginning. And yeah. people crave something that they don't really want which is sovereignty, because people don't really want to manage themselves. The responsibility comes with but it, But yeah. when the idea came, there is a percentage of people that love the idea so much that they will go off grid and utilize these existing Absolutely. systems. But the percentage of those people are so low that it's not enough for that to become a mass adopted system that mm -hmm. actually would take what you just invested in and make you wealthy off of it. Yeah. It's, if you want that technology in a vacuum and you just use it, mm -hmm. It will never have scalability unless it's adopted by the existing systems, which then makes it centralized. Yeah. Because now it has to be connected to all these systems to make it successful. Yep. So that's the unfortunate reality of yeah. that technology, even though the white paper was amazing. amazing the yeah. reality of it is it ain't happening. Yeah. So corporations in your studies, what have you found when you look at what people may identify of the brand of decentralized but when you look on the inside, what have you seen? What snakes are slipping inside Most of the them papers? are not. Because it, even in the ones that are- that Like which threat, ones? Like, 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 well, the biggest one that banks got control of was Ethereum. Mm. So Charles is what people think Vitalik is, but they chose him to be front and center. So you think he working with SEC? I have no information. You think he working with the Alphabet Boys? I can neither confirm. You think he worked with the CIA, the FBI? It goes back to, back to the cartel analogy. There is no, like... It's Alec Holler at me. I want to talk to you. I got to investigate. In between 5 million and 20 million, that's the only place where you can really say that you have financial freedom. You have enough money to not work and not have to play ball with anybody. Once you get 25 million and above, and I always say it, as much money as Bezos have, he still has to walk around with armed security. Why? Is that freedom? No. There's always a VIG that you have to pay to somebody up higher than you for protection and to be free. So when Buffett bailed out Bank of America in 08, he could have bought Bear Stearns too, but Bear Stearns had previously crossed people in his circle and Carl Icahn, and they said, fuck it, we'll let them die. As an example, and if you guys don't play ball with us the way that you should, the next time we're gonna let you die. Mm. So I love the idea of crypto. Like for me, for people who think that I hate it, once again, I'll just like the truth. When somebody told me you can only get 7 to 12% out of the market per year, when every piece of technology has went into banking and investing first, internet cables were created to help hedge funds get faster order flow, and we can only get 12%. Let me ask you, if you focus completely on crypto from the inception that you found out about it versus stocks. Oh my God, you don't do it, don't do it. Don't. <laughs> Clip this up. Oh Dude, baby. What? Which one would have made you more money? Crypto, way more. I mean, and I was To the in, tune of how many X's? I first found out in, about Bitcoin in 2012. I think Matt Schlitt was like employee number 13 or 30 at Facebook. And I was just ear hustling at a conference, kept talking about it. And you know when people huddle up and they try not to let you yeah, in, I'm yeah, like, yeah. that's the, stuff that's the real information. Yeah. The one's like, hey, come over. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck is he talking about? So since 2012, and I was in early, 
but I just caught, got caught up in the Mount Gox thing. Um, I revealed a number on the Breakfast Club interview. You can check mine out and check Key's interview on Breakfast Club out. But it cost probably, man, well, I first heard about crypto in 2010, Bitcoin, a couple of years after. Probably four or five thousand X difference. Mm. Minimum. Minimum. Four or five thousand X. Minimum. Because it could have been really been more because the, the space is crazy. Yeah. So, like, there's nobody, just to that point, there's nobody that they made crypto their full time at the time that they heard it. Everybody that's everybody has spe- everybody would have been, but particularly with your skill sets, would have been even crazier. But everybody would have been. 100 million up. But million, it wasn't as safe back then. No, nah, it wasn't. 2010, 2012, it had the connotation with Silk Road. And, yeah. But even that, that's when you can control media and control narrative, I can tell you what the value of something is. The yeah. idea is great. Even now. Now, how you hear about something is important on how you interact with absolutely. it. Absolutely. Because when I first heard about the Silk Road, you know, the military back channel, so the Darknet, for those who don't know, is the military back channel, mm-hmm. right? How they communicate. And the Darknet is actually larger than what's considered the Absolutely. clear net, the internet, right? Yeah. There's, so people don't understand there's a reality of things that's happening. Now we're living in a world where we're seeing an emergence, yeah. right? If you want to think about Web3 and whatever it is, this time that we're living in, there's an emergence between the Darknet and the clear net, yeah. utilizing these spaces together in these tools. Yeah. But there's still... What you have to understand is that I'm sure there's a, a darker net somewhere I'm sure. that you don't know about. Yeah. That's a whole nother piece to it. Because yeah. once one spot gets blown up, another spot shows we'll up. Somewhere else. You understand yeah. me? But to that point, that's where I first heard about it. And if you seen it back then, that yeah. space was crazy. Yeah, it was different. Like, you could buy literally anything, anything. on the dark net. I yeah. mean, anything. anything. Like, from drugs to guns to bombs to assassins to sex to the first credit card scammers I saw was on Silk Road. The first what? Credit card scammers. Like they mm. were selling credit cards by yeah. the dot. Like you can get a box of six hundred credit cards for fourteen hundred bucks, yeah. three thousand dollars. When you think of the idea of the black market, mm-hmm. that's what that was. Absolutely. Like literally, like it was wild. Whoa, this is the eBay. It felt bad everything. to even be on it. It really did. Yeah. Like, you look at it like, yo, what the hell did this dude just say yeah. he could do for you? Yeah. Like, it was so crazy. Like, you can get somebody assassinated. Hey, man, for real. On there. Yeah. And that's why it was so dangerous, because you click on any one of those things and be somebody at your door. Yeah. You understand me? But people was real life ordering any drug they could think of and yeah. anything that they wanted. It was yeah. there. Yeah. It was it was dangerous, to be yeah. honest. Um, and so from there, I heard about it. My older brother, he was into it. He was just like researching. And I remember we watched some documentary about it back then. And I seen the idea and I said, what? Mm-hmm. Oh, because for me, I look at it from a liberation standpoint. Like yeah. I'm black in America. So anything that allows us to be decentralized and have sovereignty yeah. and you trying to think about the massive aspect of how big this enormous problem is mm-hmm. and what we're weighed against, you want something that's yeah. going to bring some light. So crypto to me brought some light as a tool to be like, oh, we can use this. Yeah. This would be dope, because I don't see no other way we go beat this <laughs> regime. And, and here's the, the big point that everybody missed. The economy and banks allowed room for Bitcoin and crypto because they underperformed and underserved the people for 50 years. Mm, like there is, there is no safety. The illusion, like, like my great aunt told me she had a CD and in 1990 she was getting 15% return a year. And On I'm a year, like, yearly? Yes. To go from that to CDs are abysmal. General market right now is down. And it always goes back to economics. Any institution, person, or household that could, cannot provide stability to the people that you serve, whether it's family, friends, community, you are ripe for disruption. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. So, so crypto in this space right now is heavily infiltrated with centralized networks and controllers, Mm -hmm. right? But always looked at it, because I don't look at the promises of people that try to sell me pie in the sky. I look at it as opportunities, right, in a system of capitalism to make money with otherwise opportunities that wouldn't exist. So it's like, if I get into crypto and I play the game the right way, this can be generational wealth. Absolutely. You understand me? And that's why I was always um, vocal and happy to be vocal and take the risk of being vocal. Because yeah. if you're wrong, it looks bad on you. Oh, yeah, if you're yeah. right, 
you the Messiah. Yeah. Right. Luckily, I've been I've been able been to be right, right a, lot. a lot more than wrong. Yeah. So, and and I'm gonna do it at a time where it's unpopular because that's the best time to do it. Absolutely. You understand me? If you do it while it's safe, it's like yeah. But if you do it when it's unpopular, you can bring a lot of people with you. Yeah. Because people that trust you will follow you yeah. while the rest of the world is going against you. Yeah. And so crypto was an unpopular stance because in my first interview that I had, I talked about crypto. I always dropped crypto because it was always in the back of my head. It's like, yo, we can get our reparations with it. That was my first thought. I kept thinking about this could be our reparations. This yeah. is our way to be able to get some money without relying on the government, yeah. things, whatever it is, and or create systems to where if we ever wanted to become sovereign, create our own nation, we can yeah, utilize yeah. the idea of crypto yeah. and or do business with the rest of the diaspora. We can have a trade route to be able to send money and get money directly yeah. with our brothers on the borders or in Africa rather, in the yeah. continent. So that to me made sense. It was like, yeah. all right, that's revolutionary to me. Yeah. And when I looked around, I'm like, we picketing, we, we protest, we doing all of this. It's not the way. We voting, but bro, crypto is more revolutionary than all of it. Absolutely. So that was my lens and filter for crypto, yeah. right? But that started with understanding the blockchain, not cryptocurrency. Got gotcha, you, okay. Understanding the blockchain is what got me into wanting to educate people about it. Mm -hmm. Because the blockchain allowed me to see possibilities. Yeah. And the first thought I had was, Huh, this is gonna take a while. I, I watch every TED talk I could yeah. possibly find. I watched every documentary, everything you could think of that they had on the blockchain, I was watching because yeah. I wanted to understand it. Mm -hmm. But after listening to all these ideas, and it was mostly 100% all white people talking about it, I said, ah, this space won't pop off, number one, till we get a hold of it, and or there's a creative use case to where mm -hmm. it can be mass adopted by the average person. Yeah. Because even though I will go into study, the average person won't understand this shit yeah. for a very long time. Yeah. So blockchain has a long window for adoption. So when I seen NFTs, it made sense. I said, oh. Shorter window, yeah. This is the adoption. Yeah. This could be an inflection point where not only it signals awareness to the rest of the world, but allows people to interact with it and have an experience and an exchange. And yeah. once they have that exchange, they've used it. It's now part of the world's new ecosystem, Yeah. right? So, you know, I talked to the president of Revolt, uh, not Revolt, but Reform Alliance, and we was talking about utilizing DAOs to yeah. create pay to earn systems yeah. and using it to create funnel systems to teach and educating people. And then they have jobs to go into these Silicon Valley jobs yeah. and or create their own jobs. And it's like opportunities like that are not normally possible. Yeah. Philanthropy, has a great space in this because nonprofits, I think, are some of the most inefficient machines on I the agree planet. A thousand percent. When I look at the amount of money that's thrown yeah. into nonprofits and the problems they're supposed to be solving and they're not solving, and the corporations that run these nonprofits that yeah. give them their money to purposely not solve the problem, yeah. most nonprofits should be it should be illegal yeah. for people to be pouring in billions of dollars when there are solutions that exist. Yeah. So I say DAOs the new nonprofits, but they are, they don't even gotta be nonprofit. Yeah. Like the idea of something being nonprofit, which makes it more morally better is wrong. I agree. Because the reality of it is never is. Somebody's yeah. getting a salary. Most of the time you're getting 10 cent on the dollar, 20 cent yeah, on the dollar. Yeah, a certain amount of capital is actually going to the cause, which yeah. most people don't know. Yeah. So DAOs are not only a system uh, uh, that I think creates an idea for better technology, social impact, to where we can take a list of every single problem that we have and mm -hmm. we can say let's build a DAO system around it, yeah. a political system around it, yeah. a banking system around it, whatever we want to do, I think the possibility exists. Security will be an issue, the development of it will be an issue, the management of it will be an yeah. issue, but the issues that we have are bigger than those issues. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't have a problem with it. But so to that tune, Blockchain companies mm -hmm. on the market. Which ones you looking at? Currently, um, I like Square a lot. That's one of my favorites. Okay, but that's because of Jack's involvement uh, with Elon, which was involved in PayPal. Like all the Web three companies now are really just doing what they wish PayPal could have done. They're like their own iterations. That's the one like I'm most tied to, and like the most. Jack, great entrepreneur. 
now that he's finally out of Twitter and he can focus on that, I think he'll have a significant impact on blockchain. Because even with new technology, you need a company that makes it mainstream for, mo for everybody 35 through 80 that they can understand. So blockchain, given that they payment system with crypto and then the mining operations they yeah. setting up and then his connection with Twitter and the possibilities of Web3 integration. Because he's friends with Elon. You don't think Square is going to be the company that he recommends and then 100%. Doge and Bitcoin are going to be the one. Like once he set that chess move, I'm like, it was so easy to see if you're big in the strategy. Because if you own two publicly traded companies, what would make Jack leave Twitter and go to Square? No control at Twitter. Twitter wouldn't let him mine, which was fucking stupid. Wouldn't let him buy Bitcoin. Stupid. Crazy. So great. Let me leave and go that to Square. Suck. Now I'll have a dictator come in and buy it, destroy the board, and now all the ideas I had, I'll pour into him. And he already ran the biggest payment platform prior to. That's why, like, corporate governance, community council, if they don't want you to elevate, it's the wrong people to have around That's you. That's why that Dow system it's key. ask the people what you want. People say, we want this. They yeah. vote. We implement it. It's done. Immediately. Uh, that system, I think, is the most, I think it's one of the biggest threats. But the security around it, I think, is the biggest key issue. Because yeah. once you build up something that big, you have to protect it. At all costs. And a lot of it is open source, transparent. So that's probably the, 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 the thing the I love the most it. about it. Yeah. But the weakness is making sure it's secure. Because the yeah. worst thing is building something up to billions of dollars is working. And then outside forces work a to destroy it. A hacker group comes in and destroys it. Yeah. Um, my final question for you would be, like, what's the solution? Because we can talk and intellectualize about the idea of growing wealth, making wealth. But what's the real answer for people? My answer is to invest in every asset class. The new profitable industries, I look at the Asian community, I think have the best model. Yeah. So I think emulation of what they're doing and the way that they're building their wealth, um, I think is key. So if we are the most educated in the tech sector, mm -hmm. right? And don't get me wrong, we need every other sector. But engineering is the highest paid job. Yeah, absolutely. Right? But it's also one that we struggle the most in as far as getting into engineering and tech jobs and things mm -hmm. of that nature. But if we are the most educated in the tech, you understand me, and we are the builders and developers and that becomes the culture, yeah. wow. we become a technologically savvy culture, yeah. and that's what we shift our energy, time, and attention to, Regardless of what happened, because to me, that's the investing in everything. Regardless to what happens next, yeah. right, or whichever one pops off, we will be creating it and creating the rules for it, yeah. right? When I look at the most dangerous thing is to think that something that's working for another people is just for them, mm -hmm. right? When, when we look at what's happening in the NFT space and there's billion-dollar projects and we are saying, well, that's them instead of that could be us, it's dangerous. But once again, do most people want to have wealth and be free? I say no. I think that most people want more liberty and they want the idea of what their perception of wealth is and what it means to them immediately. Yeah. What you think wealth is, I think is a higher level of freedom than that, what the average person is. But that's the difference between truth and being lied to. I think most people are actually, if they, cause we're pushing people. Yeah. And the more you push people with truth, the more you expand yeah. and they have to feel that expansion and have yeah. fulfillment. Yeah. So where this brother told me that I should have millions of dollars or this brother told me that I'm powerful, I should work for myself or this brother yeah. told me I, I should be happy. So now you start to pursue those things to have fulfillment in those areas yeah. because you're expanding a mind and once the mind is expanded, it won't contract again. Yeah. So the, the, the thing about enlightening people is that you give them more areas to bring light to. You understand me? And nobody wants to have areas that, that's not lit. That's yeah. still in the darkness. So I think directly education is key, but more so than that, if we don't have a real culture, right? Because we don't have a culture. The culture is fake. We are. We have an anti-culture. It's, yeah. it's, it's super fake. The word is not even real. It doesn't make any sense. If I study civilizations that were before us that did it successfully, like I said, the Egyptians, they knew how to take care of their people yeah. and work together in a collective manner yeah. to meet a vision and a goal. Yeah. But we don't serve the same gods. We don't have the same principles. We don't have the same visions. Yeah. Our ideas around sexuality, marriage, liberty, finance, yeah. banking, government, none of these things are in alignment. Uh -huh. So we are a people with all different cultures, flags, agendas, 
you understand me, and things that we believe in. All of those are great separators. Yeah. Separation is the key. Yeah. But the separation happens when you are around people who are alike like you and y'all own what you are on. Yeah. Because separation is not about, oh, black or white over here. No. Because <laughs> you can be unit. all black in the neighborhood and all white owned. Absolutely. So you were gentrified before you got kicked out because yeah. you didn't own anything where you was at. Yeah. So every hood in America is already gentrified because we don't Absolutely. own it. The difference is, is that if you live across the street and you own that house and I live across the street and I own this house, we separate it. Yeah. You understand me? And that's what black people in America have to do is to figure out our thesis for separation and that we have to learn. It's great to get along with other people. Diversity only works when people have understanding. Yeah. You understand me? If I don't understand you, I'm going to think you're weird and then I'm going to become weary of you yeah. because you can't accept things you don't understand. Yeah. So I think that we have to be honest with ourselves and we have to learn how to create connections based on people that we are alike and who we want to separate with. Like, because at the end of the day, you ask the average woman, she don't have that many friends. She's already practicing separation. You ask the average man, he don't have that many friends. He yeah. already practicing separation. And I ask you why? Well, I don't get along with everybody. Yeah. Well, who are these people you get along with? People who are alike like me. Yeah. People who believe the same things, have the same perspectives, ideas going in that same direction. Yeah. So that's already separation on the micro level. But when you speak it to a collective amount of people, they think of it as a negative. Mm -hmm. So the idea of different cultures and civilizations is those people believed in the same things. Yeah. So when we talk about family, boom. Oh, family makes sense, man, woman, child, let's, let's build. Yeah. Oh, what is marriage? It's a license of business where we're gonna be building wealth and bridging nations together and yeah. or families and connecting these things as a business proposal. Let's make that work. We grew up with those ideas. Yeah. Go look around and see who actually believes what you believe. Yeah. Right? And so when we're talking about on the mass scale, I think that people of the same like and the same kilt need to learn how to live together and find communities where they can live together. Yeah. This dangerous place we're heading into where the metaverse melts everything into one pot yep. and people across the entire planet are in this digital arena to where we go from discord groups of communities that's just sitting in these little pockets of chat rooms, yeah. which is very inefficient if you think about we in the fact we 2022 and we literally in chat rooms don't make sense. So metaverse makes sense to people because they say, well, instead of being in a chat room with people on a discord, I can be in a metaverse with characters and play out a game of it's social reality. at scale. Yeah, instead of social media, it's yeah. a new social reality yeah. with the metaverse. So I'm asking your question in a large form because when what what and i was asking you about was all these different asset classes and the future and we talked about time and we talked about all these different ideas but i was taught about the hereafter mm -hmm. the hereafter is what happens after white patriarchal intellect no longer yeah. rules this planet earth yeah and we can have a place to where we have freedom justice equality and righteousness and truth that rules over this planet earth mm -hmm. you understand me and that looks like a completely different world where we have our own, they have their own, and we can get along together because we own, you understand me, our identities, our culture, our values, and there's no reason to have disagreements or differences with anybody else because yeah. everybody agrees with each other. Yeah. We locked in. Yeah. So as people across the planet Earth, I think that we have to make peace that everybody has differences. You understand me? You, you're not going to go to war with somebody if y'all in agreement. Yeah. So I think that people across the planet Earth, um, black, white, orange, red, yellow, whatever the hell your color is, you understand me? Accept the fact that we have to go to war and destroy each other until a dominant idea pops up that can, you know, last for the longest until a new idea challenges that. Yeah. And or people find separation with their ideas, their beliefs and what they think should be society. Yeah. And then y'all go find different places where y'all can live in these segmented communities across the planet Earth, and then y'all can have peace. An actual war or philosophical? I think both. Because I think actual wars happen when it gets to a point where the philosophy ain't hit. When the math ain't math, and it's time for us to yeah, yeah. pull out the weapons. Yeah. When if I'm trying to convince you that the best thing for me and my family, you understand me, uh, it's to, for us to believe and worship God in the manner in which we believe in it, mm -hmm. for man and woman and child to come together, for us to be able to teach our children our history to where we have, part, we have ownership in our own um, 
food, water, clothing, shelter, banking systems in a way that we believe and decree is best for us. Yeah. And then you got an issue with that. Yeah. So guess what? Anytime that you come over here to disrupt my life, then that's when I have to take up arms to protect my peace. So that's that's the end result where there's yeah. where we, we've tried all the philosophies, mm -hmm. because the problem with philosophy is most people are afraid of truth. They're not going to get in that arena and debate. Yeah, because people are not arguing with truth anymore at all. It's all emotion. Nah. Yeah. It's, it's, so when you have an issue with somebody, they're not going to come confront you. They're going to call you a bigot. They're going to call you this, that and the third. We'll say, OK, what part of what I said was untruthful? Yeah. And if we can have a conversation where you can show me a superior truth and superior knowledge, I will submit to it. Yeah. But if you're not willing to have that conversation because you believe that it's going to spread more truth, then of course we're going to have an issue until this turns into violence. But what about the person that finances both sides of the war? That's how the one, like a war is a mechanism to keep control. Yeah. That's why America's only been out of war maybe what, 23 years, 24 years? I think that, you know, the, the, the biggest war we're going to go through in our lifetime, you understand me? Or the ones that we're going through is identity crisis. Mm -hmm. Not knowing who we are, not knowing where we are. Yeah. You understand me? Not really knowing what we are yeah. as a people. Not having, we, we, we uh, have amnesia. Mm -hmm. We don't know when you go over to Egypt and you look at the Sphinx and you look at the beautiful paintings and black people all across, you see Imhotep. You understand me? The father of science and mathematics and language and agriculture, and architecture and design and geometry and language, right? And medicine and makeup, yeah. right? And all of these different beautiful things and you don't connect yourself to that? Yeah. Of course, you don't know what to do next. If you were yeah. born in a world where you lost your identity, you don't know who Ian is, yeah. you ain't gonna know what to do. You won't have purpose. Your purpose is connected to your identity. Your yeah. identity is connected to where you came from. Yeah. So. Self-knowledge has always been the key of giving people back the knowledge of self and filling up their cup and then they know who they are and why I'm here. So all of a sudden you realize like, yo, Ian, you know, uh, you forgot who you are. You know, you, you trade stocks and you teach yeah. people and you'll be like, oh, for real, that's what I do? Yeah. Well, shit, let me go trade stocks and teach people. Yeah. Let me go help financially liberate more people on this planet Earth. I know what I'm capable of. I know what I do. Tell me where I came from. Then you start to understand more of your makeup, yourself, why you speak a certain way, yeah. why you feel a certain way about certain things when you see them, what's in your DNA. But without that knowledge of self, you will be lost in the world trying to figure out what's your place and what to do next. Yeah. And that's how a lot, particularly of black people in America feel right now to this day. Absolutely. And not even just black people in America, because white people don't know who they are. They don't study their own self in history. Yeah. Africans don't know who they are. They don't yeah. study their self in history. Yeah. I go to the e e Egypt. Those people don't feel connected to the pyramids. Absolutely, they don't yeah. know that history. They don't yeah. study that. Black scholars yeah. in America know more about African history than any other people on the planet Earth. That's crazy. And there's nobody that can tell me difference. We yeah. teach and educate the entire planet Earth about yeah. history. We are the most counter to the narrative that they give us about history on the planet. Because we will not accept the fact that we have a displacement in the feeling of knowing that we gods. Yeah. And something not feeling right when y'all trying to get us to see ourselves as slaves and niggas. Yeah. Like, this don't make no sense. So we yeah. trying to find what we feel and connect that to history and knowledge till it gets to a point where we like, ah, yeah. now true. this makes yeah, sense. True validation, yeah. So the solution will always be separation. We focus on owning all our things for ourselves. Yeah. We focus on our own culture, our own spirituality, you understand me? Our own supply of food, clothing, and shelter for ourselves. Yeah. If it's not self-sustainability, anything we do will be a band-aid on the problem. Yeah. But before we get there, education is the key and the foundation to having the knowledge to start strategizing on building our wealth. You understand me? Because our wealth is our power, but that wealth doesn't look like money. It looks like family, mm. right? So the repairment of the family and the relationship between Has black be men and women yeah. is worth more than anything on the planet Earth. Yeah. Like black men and women getting along together is yeah. worth more than all the gold in Fort Knox. Yeah. You understand me that if we have another movement that's a man's movement, a woman's movement, it has to be a, like literally call it the black man and woman march. You understand me? And this march is only so that black men and women can have atonement. Yeah. You understand me? And they can start talking about the ideas that separate them in the history that destroyed their connection to each other spiritually. Yeah. Because when we look at the stories of Osset and ISIS and 
or Osiris or whatever, and you got speaking life into this dead guy, vibrating him back up to life so that he can go back into who he is and his rulership, that's exactly what needs to happen. Happen, yeah. So it's like, we know the issue, we know the problem, we have to create the movement around that. Yeah. And that's why wealth allows us the luxury yeah. to be able to deal with our long-term problems for long-term solutions. Well said, man. We gotta but, get working on this project. So last but not least, I had to end it off on your question, not mine. Because you here, I want more from Ian. Ian Dunlap, the master investor, you know, you, you a liberator of people uh, based on giving them a new money consciousness and a new wealth consciousness. When it comes to this idea of what we see in the culture, you understand me, based on past, present, what do you see, either something that you foresee or something that you want to see mm -hmm. in the future? What do you foresee the future of black America and or what do you foresee is the future of America? Unfortunately, America is on its decline. I don't see, take me out of it. I don't see any economist, any banker, any forecaster that says, it's going to get better or this is how we can make it better. I think we're too far behind and we leverage our country in the wrong way for too long to be able to catch up. For black people, we had a very interesting crossroads. Either we're going to take a right or we all choose to learn, get liberated, get free, or we're going to go left and we're going to be led right to a slaughterhouse. The gap between, you think the wealth gap is bad now? Give it 10 years. Mm. And they're gonna say, we gave you crypto on the ground fucking floor and you did nothing with it. Mm. Whatever happens, happens. The truth is, it's not a company's job to make you rich, a country's job to make you rich. It is your job only. That's why you're seeing, once I saw gig economy start to come in really heavy like in 2010, I'm like, the job market's over with. Now I don't have to pay you any big benefits don't have to keep you for long. You're virtually irreplaceable. Now you've created a market of intellectual prostitutes where now you can go to Uber, Fiverr, Instacart, but there's no viability there. Whenever you don't take care of the people and don't have sustainability for them, it's because the system is collapsing. Hmm. How much money should the average black man have today? How much money should the average man, just period, but black man like have? Like saved or invested away? Before he considers himself to get into a relationship, start a family, anything. Like Minimum 50000 50000 Minimum. Your kid going to eat that up first two years. What about uh, a black woman? Before they get into a relationship, they're going to hate the answer. One fifty because black women end up taking care of nine or ten people. So the burden, like the burden that men used to carry, women now carry. Mm. And fellas, I'm not caping. I'm not doing my Derek Jackson. But man, most men don't get up and work and bust their ass to provide. 20% do. Mm. Cost. If you, and I always say, if you look at divorce law, divorce court, child support, if you put them together in all states as one company, it'd be the number one company in terms of revenue in the country. Last but not least, diversification. Tell the people what are some things, 100%, like, I don't care who you are, what you are, yeah. what you think, you know, what a blah, 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 say. Like, this is like just your fail-safe plan. The asset classes you should own so that you can be safe in this world that is and what's coming. You have to have your own business. Because if not, you're relying, even in crypto and in stocks, you're reliant upon somebody else's idea for your freedom. It's a mistake. Number two, stocks. Number three, crypto. Have to have life insurance. You have to have some kind of royalty or subscription model in your possession and you have to have real estate. Buffett got capital from a partnership, did well for them, left, because partners can be trouble at times if you pick the wrong ones, bought Geico, took the premiums from Geico and put it into his fund. And now he has a money machine. That's why Buffett can never go out of business. If he needs to, he can take majority of the premiums out of Geico and reinvest. Mm. Into and then which will allow them to buy other businesses. 
The business model is easy. Own one, you need insurance, you need to invest in the stock market, you need crypto, and then you need to continue to add to those. The yeah. hard part is doing it every day, day in, day out, not deviating from plan, even when things are getting shiny and look more attractive. Got it. Yeah. Man, I appreciate it. I appreciate you too. This is a very powerful, high level conversation. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want people to take from this the ideas that we spun around because I think all of them come into one, the truth about reality, Absolutely. truth about investing, the truth about truth. Like the purpose never, of family, huh? The purpose of family, the purpose of family. Yeah. You understand me? The purpose of diversification, the purpose of understanding reality. Yeah. Right. Like, and just the intentionality of having a plan and a strategy, mm -hmm. because if you don't have it, then you don't know where you're going. Yeah. You understand me? And, and I think that all people right now are trying to figure out what to do next. Cause even people that find success, I think that they are the people that are really looking at what to do next. Cause it's yeah. the worst to have something and to lose it. To Absolutely. have nothing at all, the poorest people are going to be okay. Yeah. They're not going to feel depression. Absolutely. You understand me? Because they don't have anything. It's the yeah. people that think they up and don't think that they got to do anything to maintain yeah. their status and position yeah. and not understanding the reality of this world and where we at yeah. are the people that's going to get hit the worst. Yeah. You understand me? When you get that slap in your face and you felt like you can play around with these asset classes, you can play around it, with these And ideas. it's not one or the other. It's all. It's all. Including the family part. Because mm -hmm. you can have all the money in the world and we see it with men all the time who have a bunch of money and they can't get the women that they want, they feel empty as hell or no real friends. Mm -hmm. I don't know how as a culture we don't have more friendships when there's more commonality and more media for us to communicate across. You would think so. That shit can feel like people, I'm like, in the 90s when I was watching fucking Power Rangers and Michael Jordan play Portland, I was like, damn, I wish I could connect to every person in the world. How do we have more communication devices than ever and we're more separated? I don't think we were ever meant to have a large swaths of friends. I agree. I, I, I don't think human beings have never been wired that way. Yeah. To even be known by unhealthy. large groups of people, yeah. to be observed by this many people yeah. that was never a part of you understand me, human history. Yeah. This is a completely new time and place and space to where you know, one person can know a thousand people. Yeah. It can be known by millions of people, yeah. right? For doing something goofy or whatever it may be, or being a leader. Yeah. So, you know, I think that it's fair that the average person only knows a solid five people that you can trust. We can only trust so many people and we yeah. can only hold so much trust. Yeah, if you so got a good people. four, hold on to them. Absolutely. I feel like a lot of times people under underappreciate or don't value who they have already. I'm like, just continue to grow, and as they grow, you guys will come up together. Like, that's why like my dream team, family and friends, are so important. Like I see with you and your brother, you're rocking with the same people. Yeah. People want more. That's not like when, when people are looking up to celebrity. I'm like, you don't fucking know them people. You know the image that you see of them online. Mm -hmm. Treat your friends like the celebrity. That's, that's what I've fact. always done. Like treat them like they're everything. You need that family structure, peace, friends, and the money, and then give back. That's the solution. Man, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you too, man. This is high level. Peace. We tapped in. Love you, dude. I'm 19 keys. This is high level conversation. Tap in with the guys. I had an amazing time here with 19 keys. I'm Ian Dunlap, the master investor. The number one thing I want you to take away from our conversation is only you are responsible for your financial freedom. No company. No government, no family member, no friend is responsible for you being free. We want to have a lot of conversation and there may be some things in here you may not want to hear, but it's to help train you to understand that it's only up to you and solely you to be able to take care of you and your family. And a second gem would be invest in every asset class. I see too many people arguing over stocks versus crypto versus real estate, Dow, NFT, trading. The real secret that all the wealthiest people that I ever met, they combine all of them. So enjoy this conversation I had with my brother, one of my favorite people on the planet. I've always told him I think he's the greatest out of all of us. Um, you're going to hear me interview him a little bit because I wanted to squeeze some gems out of him. But invest in every asset class. Follow what he tells you on NFTs and crypto. 
and you can be financially free. Love you all. Thank you. Peace family, 19 Keys tapping in with you. Um, I want to tell you why you need to tap into the infinite wealth strategies. Number one, there's a lot of millionaires being brought every single day, right? The job market is devastated, you understand me? Um, you can go to college, but it's better to get you a skill. I've had several six-figure days in the market trading, right? Cryptocurrency. And at the time, I had little knowledge, right? I've sold an NFT, which was just a digital picture rendering for over $16,000. But why? Because I understood the market and I knew the value of it. I've sold thousands of books, you understand me, on my e-commerce platform, utilizing my strategies that I teach inside the Infinite Wealth Strategy. But I also have a beautiful community of people all around the world assisting, providing information, resources, and links. Because I know that it's harder to learn by yourself, but it's better to learn in a community sense. When you join Infinite Wealth Strategies, you too can become a part of a community of people learning together and earning together. Make sure you tap in because it's the education that you need in order to succeed and build wealth. Don't be on the outside. Tap in. Infinite Wealth Strategies.